so like the the way that what I'm what I have always kind of been playing with when I've thought been thinking about this ace is like not so much like the not so much like uh Top Gun Ace, more like you know in Voltron they have like Keith is the main character and then Lance is the one that's always a little bit uh jealous of Keith. You're um, Vegeta. I'm Vegeta to <laughs> to keith no yeah i yes exactly i'm actually like the one that's a little jealous but like tries to show off a little bit more to be like uh-huh. that's kind of how i saw the the ace um at least as i would play it if i played it yeah um i'm just not sure who i'd be competing with in- it doesn't have to the- even be someone from our kit yeah that's true that's true like there can be someone else like that is on our side that you're like so jealous of yeah, like Kestrel and M80. Well, maybe it's like your older brother <laughs> or sister. Yeah, it could be. It it could be uh something like that. It could be M80. God, he's back in Pog. M90. M9. <laughs> M8X. <laughs> Crystal shard kaboom. <laughs> Except I take the veteran ability of someone else that's not true I don't do that. so like when do you get like new abilities like that like how does that veteran thing work it's after your playbook experience levels up right yeah there was a lot of stuff that we uh just yeah it was uh it was not good we we, we did a lot of weird shit uh the other night mm-hmm. so like so, let's it's like let's say we finish a mission, we get a little bit of experience. Like after a few missions, we level up. Yeah, so you so, get experience when you do anything that involves desperate actions. Um, mm-hmm. You also get experience at the end of, um, I guess, any mission. We kind of go back and say, you know, did you struggle with? You know this or that. Like we go through the questions, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. You... Hey, Val. You do you hey. you also level uh, skills too, right? Like separately, based on how many times you use them, right? Yeah, I th- I yeah. think um, anytime you use a, a skill in a desperate way, you mark XP in like that like skills. That skill. Like category? You like take it off or something like that. Yeah, that's right. It's like insight or prowess or resolve or something like that. Yeah, and then when, it, like when that fills up, you can add anything yeah. inside there. Okay. And if I remember correctly, because there's different types of experience points. So the only reason I remember any of this is because I went on a deep dive because I missed like step nine on character creation. I was like, how the fuck do you get special abilities? Um <laughs> And I didn't realize like you can get a special ability when you start, because um, I, I kept like saying like these are so cool. How can I get one of these? Um, the answer is you start with one. But yeah. because of that, I went into a deep dive into like how you get all this other stuff. Um, so I was like, oh, you, you get like playbook experience and skill experience. This is cool. That's pretty nifty. And I was just wondering because it's just like I want to know when I get that veteran ability because I want to have the mech that can carry more. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I want to take uh, more than meets the eye. Damn it! I just—it's gonna happen. You have to. <laughs> I, ha- I have to. You realize that it's gonna turn into like a motorcycle for some reason. And a, and How a does it get so small? <laughs> you know what? Transformers did that shit all the time. They yeah. just, it just falls he turned, down. It's fine. He I turned mean, into a gun. Dinosaurs just turn into like tiny little cars, like a yeah. Chevrolet or something. Didn't you see the Transformers movie where that giant cube turned into the little one that uh, Shia LaBeouf ran around with? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I watched a lot of the Transformers movies. I watched. <laughs> That's because oh, Transformers are fucking movies. awesome. They're awesome. The movies, awesome. Are the movies <laughs> aren't as awesome. Well, 
the first two are okay. One. No, you're going down. Yeah, there me. was definitely a dip in the middle. I felt Bumblebee yeah, actually was like I put it on and I was like, oh, I actually watched this. I like Bumblebee. <laughs> I like Bumblebee. Yeah, I haven't I like seen Bumblebee. Bumblebee. I uh, I watched the first three and then when I got to the third one, I was like, I'm not, I'm not watching more of these. Yeah, <laughs> Bumblebee was actually yeah. decent. I like that one. I like Bumblebee. I like Bumblebee. I've heard that, but eh. <laughs> I don't trust that. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, okay. so what are we doing right now? Yeah, uh, what are we doing right now? Right now, um, let's decide what the the last faction is going to be. Um, did you guys okay. have any? Because I I kind of figure, at least from what some of you have talked about, that this is probably the faction that's going to be like your patron faction. It doesn't have to be, uh, but mm. this is going to be like the other mm. major. Um, the other major side in this war. Does anybody have any, like... Um, I was kind of talking to John about it, um, sort of, like, spitballing my own thoughts on how I want this to kind of play out. Um, I kind of see that the uh, the the ULF, or whatever the hell it is, like, I called them. Um, I'll have to pull that up later. But uh, basically, the, the ones that currently have control of the Dawnstar, um, that they're sort of the, the other big side of this, um so the their counterpart is going to be the ones that are sort of planet side um i kind of imagine that this is going to be like the main hub planet that you know 80 percent of the action is probably going to take place on or around um so what what kind of things do you do you want to see out of this does anybody have any uh amazing ideas <sighs> I have ideas. Fight. I don't know if they're amazing. <laughs> I, 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 have, I have some thoughts. Like, uh... I think one of my thoughts is that like maybe it should be a different sort of form of government because we seem to be touching upon different parts of those. Like, you got the theocracy. Theocracy? Yeah. 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 Uh, Corporatocracy. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Democracy. A sort of anarchism sort of vibe with the scavengers. Yeah, so I, I think the uh, the one that they have left is the autocracy, which I think is, is that, like, it's like led which by I guess, one main person. It could be interesting if it's like autocracy in the sense of uh, like what's it called, uh, Starship Troopers. Yeah, I was thinking. I'm that, doing that my actually, part. That, <laughs> no, I agree though. Like that, there there could be a, like a military autocracy. Exactly, um, like a, 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 a jun junta, however the fuck you say that word. Can't find the document. Which word? A junta, like J U N T A. Oh. I, I don't know if the J is silent or not. I've, I've only junta? seen the word. I can't remember. I don't know. The words, I've only seen it written out. I haven't really <laughs> had to say it. But either uh, how way. How do you spell autocracy? Autocracy. Okay, okay. I looked up the right one. Okay. okay. But yeah, so I'm I picturing got an like oligarchy. Oh yeah, I know. Um, I'm picturing oh, Olive yeah, like, Garden. Let's that's gonna be our Olive Garden is our home base. Yes. Run um, by the when world. you're here, your family, your <laughs> pilots. Now give me some free breadsticks. <laughs> we just watched the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, okay? Oh my god, <laughs> that movie was fantastic. I don't care what anybody says. I haven't watched my, it yet. I haven't watched my it. My four-year-old daughter loves that movie. <laughs> I need to watch it at least as a Sonic kid. It but is yeah. not bad. I really like that movie, actually. It's like classic Jim Carrey when... I mean, he has no right to be as funny as he is in that. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm thinking, like, we could have it, like... We don't have to be, like, the good, good guys. You know what I mean? It could be definitely, like, gray on gray, right? I, well, that's I really... perfect for that. That's definitely kind of yeah. the 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 feel that you want to go for. I mean, your the people you work for can be horrible, but mm -hmm. you you don't necessarily have to be. Like I picture maybe like the 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 group like this this big military faction that we're a part of, right? Like whatever this military government is is just directly die opposed. Like they were these were the people that were controlling the uh, uh, the, uh, the the Dawn Star, right? So this is this big military force that was being fed by by that that supply line that is just suddenly being cut off. 
Yeah. I, I, I feel like that's very in line with, um, me like the mech genre, not just to like harp on the, the, the genre overall, but like the idea that like, these are, um, machines of war, uh, I think that it makes sense that we would be part of a faction that perpetuates war or um, glorifies it in some some particular fashion. Um, so I, I I really like the idea of having like a militaristic uh, faction that's our like patron um, that's mm -hmm. like the, the leading group. And like I sort of see us as like like not like not like us as a group like like I sort of see like this faction as like being. Like, there's definitely, like, a bunch of worlds that they have that are civilian worlds, but it all sort of is just, like, perpetuated to just kind of keep that grip they have on the, uh, on the, on the uh, solar system, essentially. Like, they just need to get the, uh, the Dawnstar back so they can keep the territory they have. Yeah. Like, oh... We have to go quash the rebels, you know. Oh, they're just getting they're getting rowdy again. And then we kind of probably like I I almost picture like being an uh, an autocratic government as it is. Maybe most people don't actually know what's going on with the Dawn Star. Like like there's like a propaganda. Like most people don't know that it got taken over fully. People mm. just think, oh, it's just this little rebel upstart. It'll be over by Christmas. Just like, like the virus. <laughs> like the virus. Just everything's just you know always oh it's over by Christmas or you know we'll 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 be home we'll be home by Thanksgiving crap just all the time. So when when do you guys think that the Dawn Star was taken over? Was this like within the last couple months? Was this a couple years ago? Because um, I want to see like small amount of years. That's my personal take. I don't know. Like, what do other people think? Mm -hmm. I think it would be interesting because they kind of put it off as this. Ah, oh, it's just like no big deal, but it's been years. But they keep trying to feed this information that it's just a small issue that's going to be over with pretty soon, sort of deal. Because they don't want people to get ideas. Oh yeah, they they probably don't want to feel like uh, like they've they don't have this. Uh under control. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And they probably double down on that sort of propaganda to foster like a sort of patriotism, you know? Get pe more people to sign up for the military and such. So the other thing I want to ask you guys is um, part of the the concept behind this game is that like you're not um, you're not entirely set to just run missions for one particular faction um you're you can you know you may have several factions that that come to you with with jobs so are you guys going to be like specifically a a branch of whatever whatever faction military that you guys have or are you guys kind of a a separate entity that they've that they've called upon because i the kind of it would the, be cool oh go ahead finish sorry no i was just gonna say um it the the way the book's written is that like a lot of these squads are are basically almost pulled in and hired and they may not have like a hundred percent ties to that particular fashion faction but you know they're that's kind of like their dominant um, source of uh, income and everything but yeah go ahead Ben oh I was gonna say it'd be cool if we worked for other fashion uh, factions because like for some reason like the currency has been destabilized and so like a lot of people have had to go back to like bartering does that make sense Ooh, or maybe like the war is actually going real bad and they're just kind of hiring mercenaries <laughs> i mean it would make sense they they kind of go together i mean if it's a case of this uh, you know, whatever this autocracy government is, if it's starting to feel the pinch of, of no longer holding the reins of this sector of space like it did once before, then, you know, whatever whatever form of currency they're they're using may be slipping. And, mm -hmm. you know, trade is becoming a more 
a more concrete way of, of making sure you get what you want. I just picture like most of you guys should like can and definitely should be mercenaries if that's what you guys want. I definitely picture my character is from officer school from this autocracy. Like they are through and through. Like they're. I almost picture that like maybe like my character is put into your guys' squad just as the 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 eyes. Like I'm supposed to take care of you guys. It's like I, I, I'm I'm the like this autocracy's like mouthpiece, the eyes and ears. So You're like the contacts, professional exactly. snitch. Yes, professional snitch. Exactly. I'm the one that's supposed to make sure you guys are actually doing the right shit. Mm. Because like it's not like you guys are in like cheap mechs. We're in the good shit. <laughs> and we're we're of, supposed to be doing important things. And it's kind of interesting because um, it's you know once once we start making the the actual squad, one of the things you have to do is you make like your not like your superior officer, but you know every squad kind of has a contact, which is like their their liaison to whatever patron faction you have. So if if you go that route, you you kind of already have like a, a good story in to yeah to being you know like, attached to that person, whatever that whatever they are. Exactly. I have I have a CO. Yeah. <laughs> like brigadier general something something. But we're not. My only request is that they're Lee our army. Are you change on? But it's it sounds like we're not necessarily beholden. To, like we're not directly under that chain of command. We, it sounds like we, there is some degree of independence that we have as a unit, right? Like that's or is that not what we're talking about right now? No, that that is, um, and it's mm -hmm. that's that's definitely kind of the the feel you want to go for. At least that's that's the feel I want to go because in case I get written into a corner kind of and I need to you know supply you guys with missions that go against your faction or are not entirely within within their realm you know that gives me an opportunity to do something else that you guys wouldn't be saying oh for for king and country I'm not doing that that's that's fucking stupid I don't want to get my head cut off yeah like I picture like once I'm put with your guys a squad I'm not like as beholden like I'm supposed to do stuff with my country's interest in mind, but one way or another, I am working for a mercenary company anyways. So the reason I, I'm asking that is um, my ulterior motive is a little selfish. Um, one of the things I was like toying with the idea of is like we were talking about the colonists, or I don't know what we're gonna, what we ended up naming them. I think it was like the ULF or something. Yeah, something. Maybe. Um, Some stupid thing somebody came up with. The AMB is the colonists on the half okay. terraform planet. Sure. Um, so whichever whichever group we were talking about that was like new rich or whatever, yeah, um, yeah, the yeah. new reach group. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, I don't have the document in front of me, but we're, well, one of the things that we we're talking about is like that I was talking about with Matt is like that that perception is mostly for the Jeff Bezoses of the organization and that the general population is just like the like the workers and stuff um and for whatever reason like i'm i thought about possibly exploring the idea of having my character have come from like that worker class and is now working as part of if this force or this squad um mm -hmm. either as an exile or as like a like an ex expat or something like that mm -hmm. um which I think I think would be interesting if it was a little bit more like mixed in terms of of nationalities. Oh, for sure. Like my character um, in Thursday is actually like the same idea. Like they were part of the ULF, and then they went to like the um, the the big like corporatocracy uh, faction, mm. just as a mercenary in the same way, but just to a different faction. Yeah, I'll I'll tell you guys right now. Uh, Bill and Val are going to be both ahead of you guys in some way because they've actually gotten to play this, uh, but they're also going to be behind you because they played it with rules that I told them that were totally incorrect. So the, I'll, <laughs> the, they'll have to unlearn a bunch of stuff. But eh, it was fun. That's what counts. It's fine. I don't retain information. <laughs> <laughs> you have to watch a video every morning. Pretty much. No, it's just like a, memento. Just, just, just like, like 50 per state. Just <laughs> like, 
Oh, wait, was it 51st or 51st? Yeah. 51st <laughs> dates. Like five zero, yeah. 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 Yeah, just a video of my entire life <laughs> every morning. Fifty <laughs> first mm-hmm. date. Yeah, I think it would be cool if my character, since it's infiltration, it was like corp- corporate espionage that I came across, and I didn't like what I saw, so I like tried to get out of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm totally down with you guys, like being from a lot of different factions and backgrounds and things, because I, I, I think not only is that going to give you guys fun. Um, role-playing chances and, and stuff that I can pull on to where I can actually say, um, cause I don't, I know I wrote up a lot of the faction stuff, you know, based on what you guys did and added some my, my own flavor to it. But I also want to be able to come back. So like if somebody is working for the NVI and we start dealing with them, I can say, you know, all right, Ben, uh, you came from this, this history here. Um, who, you know, what was the structure? Who, who, who is the the main the main guy in here, and we can start kind of building off that. So I would sure. I would be able to to lean on you guys for that sort of stuff, and and you guys would be able to have more of a, a direct control over the story. So yeah, if you guys if you guys want to be a part of of different factions all coming together, um, you know, if those were sort of your your home planet kind of a things, then then fantastic. I'm I'm down with that, and we can work with it. Yeah, and no, like I definitely picture like my characters from like uh, like the, the the Starfleet Academy sort of thing, you know, the the officer school, very very much uh, like uh, that sort of character. They're 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 through and through like right from like they they, they were they 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 were fed the propaganda. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you watch uh, Lower Decks at all? I have heard of it. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is it good? Never mind. Uh, It's entertaining. It's charming. There's one character who really wants to be a commanding officer. And, like, all I can think of when you're talking about that, Bill, is that character. (laughs) All right. I've switched over from my chocolate martini to straight bourbon. That means (laughs) I'm ready for action. Um, Okay. Go time. So it kind of sounds like to me, at least, we don't we don't have to hammer out um, your all's main faction just yet. Um, I'll I'll probably kind of crowd crowdsource that a little bit with you guys, and then write up something later on that that really hammers mm-hmm. it out based on um, probably what you got, your all's characters come up with. Um, but it kind of it kind of sounds like that they are very military focused. Um, that they've sort of had the run run of things for quite a while now, and this is maybe maybe the first time that they've actually um, been really threatened at this point. So uh, I could see why they would suddenly start to um, not just employ people from their military, but maybe reach outside, um, maybe a few more clandestine uh, groups that can work outside of their purview. Um, which is definitely where you guys could fall in if that's what you want. But uh, yeah, that that seems like a, a fairly sort of generic, basic thing that we can work with. Um, and since they are going to be your patron faction, um, we can leave it a little generic to start off with, and we can sort of build up what that means through play, uh, which which I kind of like. Um, but yeah, it'll it'll definitely be an autocracy of some kind. Um, we can discuss what their faction goal is. Um, maybe after we get into character stuff, but I, I do want to start getting into the characters uh, just so we have an idea of uh, who's running what and where we're going and, and all that good stuff. So does anybody have like a super concrete character concept that they're like totally ready to debut <laughs> here and, and wants to go first? I'm, I'm, I'm good. All right. Well, that's that. That looks about right. Yeah, I I, I was already working on this today, so. <laughs> of course, Mr. DM guy. I I got excited. I know. As well, I know you should. I even got a picture. I... Let me. Uh, I lost my sketch, but I think a room. <laughs> so yeah, here's here's the the picture of my character. I guess I should put that in like. Oh yeah, we just had like uh, 
minutes, right? I won't put it into the notes section. Fell asleep in general. All right, let's see. Uh, and anybody that has not seen the sheet yet, I will just pop this into general chat. Um, because Roll20 doesn't have like actual uh, character sheets for any of this stuff, we're going to be running it all off Google Sheets. Holy shit, mm -hmm. on a shingle. Okay. <laughs> send this to myself. How do I? Oh, there we go. I want to pop out the uh, little video screen. There we go. Then I can see you guys while I do stuff. Oh, I should do that in the future. I need to get a two monitor set up. I still, I still don't got one. Because <laughs> what I want to do is I don't want to get rid of my TV because I like it for watching stuff on. Because I can like lay in bed or whatever else I want to do, like some lazy. So I need to get like I need to get a wall mount and two monitors. Is my issue. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so my character, her name is. Desdemona Nice. Her call sign is Athena. And she is an officer of whatever the hell this place is called. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, I'll write a description later, but I posted the picture already. Yeah. Um, squad, that's later. Uh, history, I suppose I can put, like, you know. Uh, she's. She's like. Uh, fresh graduate of like the academy however i kind of picture it takes a long time to go through it it's kind of like becoming a doctor or what have you like she's not young young because she she had to go through like uh like you have to like i picture she had to actually go through duty and such before she could become an officer then she went through school then now she's at this point so she's not a young woman is this this okay See what you're is this the same spreadsheet, just different sheets inside it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. There's something. Uh, but if you go to the officer, um, sheet down at the bottom, you'll you'll see uh, Bill is already starting to to fill some stuff in here. Yeah, I got a little bit already. My the like the vehicle's name is gonna be Aegis. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I don't know where you came uh, up with that. Yeah. It's Athena, so I've got the shield, of course. Ah. Uh... Yeah, the shield is Aegis. It's also a reference, but not primarily. <laughs> it's just both, which is nice. My my mech is going to be called the Jimmy. Just as <laughs> <laughs> uh... It's not. <laughs> Instead of cyan, it's like sea foam. And your call sign is Pegasus. <laughs> Don't give him oh, ideas. Right. Oh. <laughs> He's like, oh yes, it's perfect. <laughs> cool. I'm watching you fill this out. I'm gonna be Ace Pilot Rick Hunter. No shit. <laughs> Fuck, that's taken already. God damn it. Uh, it's gonna be. Jack Hunter. Shit. Oh, God. <laughs> Ron Jeremy. Wait. wait. <laughs> Please no. <laughs> All right. So I will, uh, just for the, the sake of doing this, like, all good and proper. Uh, we'll run through the pilot creation just so everybody kind of has to deal with the same things. Uh, so uh -huh. choose a playbook, which Bill has already done. Bill has chosen the officer. Uh, so you're going to start off with three starting action points, um, which were, I think, command and survey. Does that sound about right? Yeah, he has two in command and one in survey, at least that's yep. what it looks like. All right. Uh, so who were you before the war stole from you? Uh, this is going to be your history, and you will place a point in your... Uh, your pilot or vehicle action that sort of sums up this this past life that you had. 
Okay. I want to put a point into... Hmm. Can I back up a second? Yes. The three starting action points, are those the ones that are already like marked in the yes. playbook? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to take a point in battle for my mech. That makes sense. Uh, so what's, what's your history? Why do you have this battle? Why do you have this extra point in battle? I picture like the survey and the command also come from the school. The battle is just another extension of my training, because I have to be able to pilot a mech, because that's the sort of officer I was becoming. Yeah. I like it. Uh, so, um, how has your pilot experienced the cost of this war? This is going to be your tragedy. So this yes. is, uh, this is what I, the I don't war know is taken called, from you. But my parents were on that ambition terraforming platform. Uh, were being the key form. <laughs> Interesting. That's kind of cool. So they, you, yeah, they were there when the terrorist attack happened. So there was there was some sort of terrorist attack on this this uh, this ring. We we don't have a name for it just yet, but uh, whatever it is. Um, actually, and if if you're going to have a specific history related to this, um, you get to name it. Boom. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so think think about that. Come back to me uh, later when you when you have nope. an idea of what you want. Uh, but yeah, so it sounds like you have uh, this. There was some sort of uh, terrorist plot against uh, the 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 terraforming uh, thing Eden here. Eden Station. I already got it. There you go. That uh -huh. that works. Perfect. You were quick on the draw. I was under, I was already going to say we should name it Eden, but if I get to name it, that means it is Eden. There you <laughs> go. Uh, okay. So then, uh, between when. When that happened, this this tragedy, and when you joined your current squad, um, we're going to talk about your opening, and this is kind of what you were doing in in between that point. Um, what what sort of brought you to be on this squad? Uh, I sort of picture like with how the war is going, they're desperate to try and form squads, so it's like an officer fresh out of their school. They could put me with a bunch of rookies, or they could put me with some people that at least supposedly, hopefully, have some talent. So the idea is that hopefully I'll have an impact on the war by being contracted out. So just basically like forced into mercenary life. So were you were you basically like put into a holding pattern while they they found somebody to to put you with? Kind of, pretty much. It's just like my character was super excited to get to you know serve her country and then it's just like and yeah sorry you don't get to do that you have to go and get out there with a bunch of cell swords <laughs> and she does not like that yeah i i imagine she's kind of been tapping her foot for you know several months while they they put together a team that that would be uh be good enough for her or, or find a team because it's not necessarily <laughs> again not necessarily that you guys were put together by this you guys probably came together in whatever way, uh, we can talk about that later. But but yeah, you were. That was probably very frustrating for Desdemona. Exactly. Uh, I don't know how I should write that out. Um, I would say that. Um, A weighted placement. There you go. You can So you came from this militant background that oh, we're yeah. all contracted to. Okay, mm -hmm. just, just got it. And then, what next? Uh, so the next thing is, what do you do? Uh, what What do you hope to change in the world? This is going to be your drive. Um, so just to kind of give like everybody uh, a quick overview of what this means, um, your drive is something that you think you you your character can actually um, complete. Um, this is going to be something that you a change you want to enact on the world. Uh, you can't like outright end the war. Um, no matter what you guys do, this war is going to continue after we finish playing. You guys, you guys might destroy uh, an entire faction or something, but um, that's probably just going to lead to a power vacuum. And no matter what, humanity is going to continue fighting. 
Um, uh, so this your your drive has to be something probably very personal to you, something that you you think you can achieve. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be something very grandiose. It could be something as small as um, you know I one one of the examples that they give in the the book is um, I I want to have a, a horse ranch that I can retire on, and then the idea is that you you build up to this so maybe you during during play one of your things during downtime is that you're going to go off and and find uh some land where you can make this ranch and another is going to be you're going to find some horses or whatever so this is this is something that you want to achieve personally uh as a pilot oh she she wants to to find and kill those terrorists that's interesting um so what that tells me is that uh, potentially, nobody knows uh, who actually is is claiming this. I imagine it's probably kind of like a real world sort of thing where several different groups claimed that that they were responsible for this, but you know nobody mm -hmm. really knows who. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't want to know yet. <laughs> All right, good. I like that. Uh, okay, so that is going to be your drive. Uh, so make sure you put that in some place. Uh, yes, avenge her parents. So would you say, um, yeah, that works. Okay. I like this. Okay. Uh, so the next thing is you're going to assign three points by dividing them amongst, uh, your vehicle actions. So those are just random. There's no real idea behind it. It's just whatever you want to do. Okay. So those three points in vehicle actions? Yes. Okay. Where are vehicle actions on this spreadsheet? <laughs> uh, there, there's uh, insight, prowess, and resolve, which is your pilot actions, and then right underneath. That oh, okay, is yeah, got it. Oh, and and based on your your opening, you also should have had a um, another point. another point in okay. Yeah. And the idea is that your your opening and your history, these should these should kind of reflect what the actions you're putting in there. So Okay, I'm gonna take consort because she was definitely she tried talking her way into a lot of things. <laughs> she she was definitely hanging around with other officers because she's she is an officer fully. She gets the you know be in the officer's lounge and go to the parties. She got to do all of that. She definitely got to talk with a lot of higher-ups. It didn't end up panning out. She still got the shitty assignment she didn't want, but she got a lot of practice with that sort of world. Yeah, I imagine uh, w wanting to actually hook up with a, a squad that was part of her faction and then being told, you know, you're you're getting a bunch of random people that, that may not even be entirely loyal to us is, is, is going to be a point of contention for her. Mm-hmm. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That looks right. Okay. Put two points split between any pilot or vehicle action. This will give you your full ten points to start with. Okay. John has a weird look. <laughs> I heard that quote from Blade Runner and I was like what are we listening to <laughs> I've got it turned off because I'm uh, I'm recording uh, yeah by the way I'm I'm recording this because uh, I don't know it seems fun it'll it'll help me go back and listen to later on to figure out what's going on and um, I don't know it's also a good practice recording exactly um Please uh, support my Patreon at... <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> what's, what's your Twitter account there, John? <laughs> a Patreon, you're a plebe. At right? John yeah. underscore where. <laughs> Watch Tumblr? me on Twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash westlikedragon. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mock me, but when we become famous and we're making so much money from this, it's going to be great. Oh, yeah. I'm blood tens and tens of dollars. Oh yeah, <laughs> no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be adverse to streaming this on Twitch while we play.
I see if someone wants to show up and watch our shit. That'd be weird. <laughs> that, that, would that would be, be weird, but that would also be weird. cool. People a little would bit. witness me. I would. We everyone should witness Val at some point in their life. I think. Yeah. Witness me. <laughs> okay, so I think I got all my points in. <laughs> all right. Uh, so uh, I know we already went over this a little bit, but now we're going to go over your name, pronouns, call sign, and your look. Uh, so what is your character's name? Desdemona Neath. Neath. Uh, does she go by Desdemona or is she like Desi? Uh... Also, also for Neath. Neath. Uh, also for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not so think as you drunk I am. <laughs> uh if if someone knows her personally, it's Desdemona. Uh otherwise it is most certainly uh Officer Neath. Ooh, Officer Neath is your nasty, I like that. Yeah, and then call sign is Athena. She does not expect to be called her call sign unless she's in her mech. That's that's a funny quirk. Okay, I like that. Uh, and you you've you've po- definitely posted a, uh, a a picture of her. Um, mm-hmm. What I'll uh... describe it in in detail and text after. But yeah. <laughs> okay. What were you gonna say that? I was just gonna say uh, give give a, a very quick oral uh, description mm-hmm. of her. Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, so she she's like middle aged, probably about like low middle age, like barely, like like 30, 31. Uh, uh, you can see, like, uh, there are sort of the lines of stress, like a little, little bit of bags under her eyes. You can tell she's had many long nights. Uh, she always has her hair done up, trying to keep it out of the way, but she does keep long hair, something that's not typical of all officers. Many to do like going for shorter hair out of practicality's sake. Uh... She's, uh, she is a woman, but she's quite, I should say, like, she's, she's physically strong. Like, you can tell she works out a lot. She's, she's got a, uh, a broad build. And she definitely tries to always keep a commanding air of herself, you know. Stiff back, walks up straight, hands behind the back. And she's never really seen, like, it's a very rare sight to see her fully in cities. It's like she's in her military uniform or she's in her dress uniform. So you say that she's in her her early 30s, probably. So do you see this as as their, their officer training school? Is this like a very extended thing where very few people can actually make it through there? Or was she stuck in there for a while? She had to earn her keep to get in in the first place. Like I picture she's uh, she's like a veteran of some smaller scale conflicts separate from this one. She was noticed. This is what she was trying to go for. Like she went into officers programs in these low in this lower conflict hoping to get noticed. She got picked and she worked her ass off while she was in officer school and now she's here. Which is why she's so pissed off because she's been trying to work her whole life to get here. So this this might actually kind of um, dovetail into some other stuff that I, I wanted to bring up, which is that I feel that this war has been going on for quite a while. Okay. Um, it's It was probably very hot at one point until things sort of cooled off into a, a bit of a Cold War situation with, uh, you know, your patron faction, the, this military force, having finally, you know, sort of come out on top, um, not really won, but, you know, basically asserted themselves as, as the dominant force and saying, you know, we can, we can keep the peace. We are, we are the force that is going to kind of um, direct where the galaxy goes from this point on. So fall in line or, or don't, but, you know, this, this is our show to run now. And we sort of got into this Cold War aspect, which is probably where your character was sitting at that point. So, you know, she really didn't maybe didn't have a lot of um, opportunities to to really advance her career. Um, mm-hmm. You know, she probably had to work really hard to actually show that she was officer material. And then this whole thing with the Dawnstar happened, you know, a year or a year or two ago, whatever it is. Yeah. The, the war goes from being, you know, 
to suddenly ramping up quite a bit and suddenly everybody's pulling in and trying to grab as many resources as they can and trying to trying to build armies um, out of thin air, which is probably where a lot of these random squads come from. Mm -hmm. So that's that's just a random uh, big picture thing that I just threw in there. I hope it didn't fuck anybody over, but uh, I like it. Yeah. Damn uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this part's going to be a little tricky. I actually want to come back to it once everybody else has sort of given uh, their given their character. But we're going to talk about um, your connections with the other pilots in your squad mm. and the beliefs around them. But you probably won't have a belief until you hear what everybody else is running. Um, yeah, sure. So if you want, go ahead and just start filling in that part of your sheet just with... Uh, well, you actually don't have any names yet, so... Yeah. No, yeah. I'll, I'll do that part later. Is there, like, a part after that that we can fill out now, though? Um, I... Let's see. I don't think so. I think that's going to do it for the pilot aspect of it. Um, oh, okay. okay. So, uh, I need to take a quick rejoinder because all the bourbon and everything is... <laughs> doing things um but you guys continue to uh chat and uh just know that you're being recorded so if you talk about me behind my back i'm going to find out later i mean you're gonna find out anyway yeah <laughs> okay so let's all talk about that let's all talk about that he's a really he's a really great guy i really i really like <laughs> matt he's nice he's <laughs> very nice <laughs> He's so kind to be running this game for us. Yes. And totally not holding us hostage. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um, I'm thinking that. So, the NVI, the corporate corporatocracy. Yep, yep. Is that's that's like a, a government entity, right? I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's a government entity. Sense. I just think it's such a it's like a mega corp where it's so yeah. big that it has that's power. Cyberpunk. Yeah, that that was actually the faction that I was thinking of too. It, and Ben, we should both be from that. That would be awesome. Okay, I'm down. I was thinking, uh, I don't know, something with employee numbers and not really having a name. And like when you break, when you when you like break away from like the NVI, you have to like call yourself a free man or something like that. So I, it's funny that you were saying that because I was toying with the name CJ. Uh, because I thought that the characters would have, like, numbers also. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, like, <laughs> FN287 or whatever, right? From Star yeah. Wars. Yeah. Oh, man. One thing I was thinking of, like, for my character and for yours, John, like, um, for your character being, like, the, uh, the Vegeta, like, the ace sort of thing, right? I kind of picture, like, your character and my character sort of might both think that they're the head of the squad. <laughs> I really like, like that idea. I, I always picture like your character is like, oh, well, this is my company. This is these are my mercenaries, and my character is is definitely on the other side of things, being like, but I'm your CEO. <laughs> oh I didn't go to officer school for nothing. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> which is like that's what I really want to be able to hit with your character. <laughs> um. Lord. I like this. Yes. That's good. Uh, so does does anybody want to go next? Uh, John, I can I can go next. I guess. All right. Uh, We're gonna come up with stuff on the fly. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to go now if you want to uh, pick some. If I no, can, no, no, no. I can if make I somebody else down, uh, feel awkward. We can we can kind of co-opt the corporatocracy. That's cool. I'm I'm on board with this. So, uh, can I just tell you one of the the thoughts that I had about corporatocracy, NVI stuff? Please, yeah. If I do go that route, um, and Matt, I was talking to you about this. Um, I really like the idea that like they are really into having like robots and artificial intelligence because they are super affordable uh, for labor, um, and socially they're treated like equals or like greater than like fleshies uh 
that's just my thought for the NBI. <laughs> so it, anyway, it, it, you're basically saying that uh, the NVI kind of prioritizes and prefers having uh, metal AI workers just because they are more predictable and and just you, probably cheaper labor you can, and you can measure their depreciation, whereas you cannot measure as easily like healthcare costs or like insurance, like premiums for uh for your fleshy workforce i'm just saying like it's it's no i like that i I like that they (laughs) they want to quantify their their employees down to to numbers and just not think about them as like actual people and it makes it so much easier if they're basically ones and zeros i'm 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 cool with that i just wanted to throw that out there i don't i did yeah okay um all right where was i choose a playbook so i before i choose a playbook i just want to say i added a a tab in the spreadsheet i don't know how but i think i did (laughs) right right before i see it a slash yeah it's like a yeah i don't know what that symbol is it's like the no that was pretty sure that that uh that just like denotes like this is the next end of of section yes exactly okay all right then. Every everybody guess what John's gonna play. I'm I'm thinking he's gonna play the ace. I was hoping it's the ace, but I'd get it if it was something else. As long as we clash, that's all I care about. All right. No, I really want to play the ace. Um, yeah. I really want to play the ace because I think it would be awesome um, to play a character who can have a transforming mech. Have a transforming mech. Um. Also, why does my character start with one in the pilot action and two in the vehicle action? Did I miss something? Might have been an accident. No, that's right. That's right. your. That's like the ace's starting thing. Okay. Um, okay, so one, choose the playbook. I am playing the ace. This will guide your pilot's methods. Um, add three starting action points from your chosen playbook. Um, so that's already chosen. That's the one and the two, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So the one pilot action and the two vehicle actions have already been chosen. Um, who were you before the war stole the war stole from you? Um, this is your history. Put one point into a pilot or vehicle action that expresses it. Um, so. I feel like the character was probably always a pilot um, and it could have been something as simple as like um, piloting some kind of rig or something like that for the um, for the corporation Um, but I don't know what action I want to take from that does it have to be a pilot action or is it Yes, it is. Uh, oh, yes. no, it can be in. No? Yeah, pilot or... No. Mm, hold on. Yeah, pilot or... V- no, I'm I'm stupid. Uh, who were you before? Put one point to a pilot or vehicle action. Yeah. So anything you want. Okay. As long as it doesn't um, go over to you. So I'm going to go a little bit weird here. I think I want to go with interface um, because I like the idea of... Um, Cybernetics, but no, that's, also that's badass. Mm-hmm. Um, like that would allow him to uh, interface with like the the different like machines that he he has to work with and stuff like that. I'm saying he. I don't know what the pronouns of this character are yet. Um, so we got that. Um, how has your pilot experienced the costs of war? Um, can we back up a second? Like the war that we're talking about, um, which fronts uh, have this been fought on? I, I guess I'm not clear on that just yet. Um, I would say that it's you could probably pick and choose. I mean, if it's it sounds like this this hot section of the war has been like the past couple of years ever since the Dawnstar was taken over. Um, so 
during that, I imagine that a lot of the the conflict has been um, either on whatever this hub planet is, or around the Dawn Star, Dawn Star, or in the 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 space uh, lanes in between there. Um, but before then, when it was sort of in the Cold War section, it probably would have been very sporadic um, and spaced out around the sector. Uh, so it kind of depends on where where you want this to take place um, on what. When when it actually took place when in 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 the war. So what, what were your I'm thoughts? Imagine, yeah. So so my thought is that, um, and I don't remember seeing the tragedies in terms of a um, like a list or suggestions. So I apologize, but I'm kind of pulling this out of thin air. Uh, I feel like. Um, there was some kind of of escalation of the conflict and um it's so normally that would mean um higher profits for the the company um but i feel like um this particular uh incident um took out a supply line or something and so i was like downsized um and so like uh like i, I certainly that is like one aspect of it but that also meant like the actual supply line was lost and there were friends and like colleagues of mine who were also lost. Um, so there's a, like, I, it was like twofold where like my life was kind of upended um, where, uh, you know, I lost friends and then also my livelihood. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you were, you that... were working for the NVI at this point. Yeah. So... I was a citizen of the NVI. So we're and and this you this doesn't necessarily have to be um, represented in your tragedy. This kind of just is for my own wonderment. Um, was your character more pissed off about losing friends or losing the the track to you know the 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 corporate track that they were on? Yeah. Um, so I think that. Um... I think that the messed up part is he was um, more pissed off about losing the track that he was on. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, I, I, my hope is that through play, like maybe he will realize that that or he or she will realize that that was um, misplaced. Uh, yeah, no, I think that's probably where I want to go with that. I like it. Uh, I like the downsizing. That's yeah, that's idea. yeah, that's that's pretty sweet. Uh, so let's see. We'll say you've been downsized. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I can just see like Arnold saying that. <laughs> Prepare to be downsized. Prepare to be downsized. <laughs> <laughs> that was my. That was actually my manager's voice. That was. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. My wife walks by. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> we're, we're we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. Where was I? Uh, uh, we're doing your. We just did your tragedy, so we're doing uh, your opening. What were you doing before you joined the squad, but after your tragedy, after you were downsized? Um, this is your opening. So I feel like after I was downsized, um, I was trying to, um, I really, oh my goodness. I really want to do like a Rick Hunter, like showing off my piloting abilities. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I really want to do that. <laughs> Um. So, like, maybe I had. Uh, yeah, I it, I feel like it was either like uh, finding odd jobs and doing like crop dusting, but being ridiculous at it, um, <laughs> or uh, had joined like some kind of like show of um, like of 
like pilot skills um, and just happened to like tr- travel with a troop that way. Um, yeah, I feel like that's probably the best. All right, so you were yeah. you were basically like a, a stunt pilot kind of a deal. Yes. All right. Uh, um, so give yourself um, another either pilot or uh, vehicle action based on that. All right. Um, I want to take something social, but I'm not sure what fits this. You're a stunt pilot, so you've got to have some kind of following, right? That's kind of consortment, right? Yeah. I'm just looking through this really quick. Or I almost... prowl, grace and precision. Or command. I mean, was this was this your your business? Was was this your stunt pilot like company? No, I feel like this was like my me being ridiculous. <laughs> Manipulate. Manipulate okay. sounds kind of right for that. Like being able to be like very delicate with the vehicle. Yeah, manipulate sounds right. Mm-hmm. Nice. All I right. Like All right. I don't know what the difference is between like dark purple and lighter purple so I'm just copying and pasting I don't think it matters I don't know what the deal is on these sheets either Um, I just put X's in the boxes and it worked (laughs) (laughs) Uh, what do you hope to change in the world this is going to be your drive they had some sample drives some of them were like uh um, starting your own farm or something like that, right? It was. It didn't have yeah. to be like okay. Um, yeah, I mean, you could open a soup kitchen. It, it kind of it's whatever you feel like. Yeah, I feel like um, it would probably be to start my own my own like shipping company or something like that I might change that but that's that's what I'll go with that's cool we'll put that in there for now uh, now you can uh, assign three points to vehicle actions three points to vehicle actions if somebody's playing with these things here Oh, and I'm going to come back to you after this bill because we we skipped one step, which which you did, but we didn't we didn't go about. So I want to make sure. Oh. Okay. Um, let's see. Man, I've got so many vehicle actions, and I can't go above two, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. One. You're an ace pilot. You get all the vehicle actions you need. Yeah. yeah. Everything's at four. Everything's at four. Ta-da! You gotta roll another character now. Good job. <laughs> okay, no I picked. I picked three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That looks right. Uh, okay, now you can choose uh, two points uh, to split either between pilot or vehicle. Basically, just put them anywhere you want, and that'll give you a total of ten. All right. I do feel like I need to take some like actual social skills. I don't know. Your character doesn't necessarily have any. They don't have to. <laughs> he smells yeah. really bad because he's always in his <laughs> ship. <laughs> um, take a look at these skills again. He just permanently smells like that black ice, like yeah. air pressure. Ace, more like ass. <laughs> he always has those trees, and when he spreads his arms, it's just. Ugh. No, like with the trees, like Christmas ornaments. Like, like just like wearing like the little like air fresheners. 
He wears them as a necklace, maybe. Oh god. They're <laughs> making Smells decisions like for car. you. <laughs> new mech smell. <laughs> Way and ooh. I feel like battle is probably the most appropriate one. I have like no skills in actual pilot things. I just have like. That's awesome though. I mean, if you're, you know, you're the you're the ace. You're you're at mo you're most at home in the cockpit. That that's great. I feel like interface would be a cool one though. Interface is pretty badass. Okay. All right, I'm picking interface for now. Yeah, I might change it. But that I just like that. That's cool. All right. Anyway. All right. Uh, so that part's done. Um, so now the the part that we skipped with Bill. Um, choose an ability from your playbook. What would you like? What was your special starting ability here? More than meets the eye. Of course. Oh uh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> um, so the idea behind more than meets the eye is that you have two forms of your vehicle. Um, so. I'm going to let you think about this while we do everything else, um, and you can figure out how you want to um, denote this on your character sheet, like maybe decide what it is, and then like whichever whichever, whichever um, actions are going to be for one vehicle, you can mark them one way, and whichever actions are going to be for another, you can mark them a different way. Uh, but basically, your your vehicle can change into two different forms. Uh, so you select two load worth of vehicle gear and three action points that your vehicle has. Um, it lacks this gears it lacks this gear and these action points when it's in its secondary form. Uh, select two load worth of vehicle gear and three action points that your vehicle lacks. This is the gear that it's going to have in its secondary form. So that's written super confusing, but I think you know yeah. what it is because you've you've probably looked at it already. I basically know what it's talking about, so we'll we'll come back to you later to to talk about what that is when we start talking about our actual vehicles. Uh, but kind of okay. think about what that uh, what that's going to entail for you. Okay, uh, Bill, let's run back to you real quick. Um, which okay. what was your what was your ability that you chose? Uh, so. I chose tactical genius, so two times per mission I can assist the squad mate without paying stress. And then I have to say how I was prepared for that exact moment. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's going to come into uh, uh, it's going to be very handy because we we were handling stress. Um, at, I'll tell you about how that works later on. It, it wasn't a big deal in our last in our last mission, uh, but yeah, down the line. Um, Basically, the the better off you know your your fellow pilots and squad mates, the more stress you have to spend to help them out. So, <laughs> the the more we work, the 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 further we get on in this campaign, the more interesting that ability is going to be. Um, Ooh, cool. So let's jump back to John real quick. Uh, John, uh, what is your pilot's name, pronoun, call sign, and look? Uh, my pilot's name is. CJ. Oh, I really want to be CJ Marks. That's not. That's... Why not? Jesus. All right. Uh, my call sign is going to be Duo. Um, because of two forms, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think pronouns are going to be he, him. Oh, what about like? I I know it's. I'm just gonna spitball. You can keep doing, but Pisces, or is it? We know Gemini. Gemini is the one I was looking for. Gemini is the one too. I do like Gemini. All right, I'll switch to Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> the wonder uh, of uh, crowdsourcing character creation here. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, what's your what's your general look? Um. I feel like after he was downsized, um, he went a little bit anime. Um, and so I feel like uh, he has like a little bit gaudier of like a, um, a flight suit and either like blue or green hair, depending on the day. Um, and like, I feel like um, 
like he he peacocks a little bit like i think that that's that's some of it like i think lots of hair gel (laughs) he always has at least 32 pieces of flair he He but in his in his axe factory it is yeah he smells a little like an axe factory he does have like the the flair is in his hair though it's not like (laughs) It is he's like, Yu-Gi-Oh. No. He's... <laughs> he, maybe two, he even has two, two forms. Two different, two different <laughs> colors of hair. No, I do. I do uh. want to have a little bit like anime style hair, um, for whatever reason. But I feel like that that is like an an external representation of like him changing. Uh, because like I feel like under the NBI like there it was like one of those things where like you were instructed to have flair, um, but and encouraged to have flair, but like it didn't really mean anything, you know? Like you you just had you know, whatever it was, like the corporate slogans or something like that. This is like he's got like patch patches from like his like his uh like flight troop and stuff like that. Um and uh yeah, I, I think I think that's probably my general look is like a little gaudy, a little bit peacocking, a little bit like anime. I feel like the corporate version. It's like when you have like the corporate flares. It's just like it's just like eat fresh on your arm. <laughs> it's like random <laughs> ad space. <laughs> when you're here, you're family. <laughs> <laughs> just like Sponsored a big Pepsi logo right. on the center. <laughs> so so that's d- super does your... 80s anime though. Does your mech? Is it gonna have like uh, like corporate logos plastered all over it? Um. So I feel like it's this is one of those things where like the troop was sponsored by corporate, like had corporate sponsors or something like that. So there is like places where it has like the um, the NASCAR style like patches and stuff. Yeah. Um. But I feel like because he left the troop, he like legally he had to take them off so like some of them are scratched off so it says like k crossed out c instead of kfc and like um like he's done his best to like cover up like patches that are like inappropriate or whatever um or not inappropriate but like uh could lead to lawsuits or 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 also identify him out in like uh in the in the open but um yeah absolutely i think that there are like remnants of corporate sponsors on his mech and on his suit. Nice. Uh, do you need to go and do bedtime? Um, I probably should. <laughs> All right. Uh, why don't we do that right now? Everybody can... We'll take a five or ten minute break. and I'm down. We'll... Come back after that and learn about uh, our our further two pilots here. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. We're back.
Hello. I've I've got my drink. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I don't know. What are you changing your drive to? I want it to be like to hurt the profits of the company. Ooh. That's cool. I like that. Mm. Ch 
change away, I will. Uh, it's on the left of your sheet, like there it is. Three just found away. it. Yeah. Hurt NBI's profits. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> if you're gonna sneeze, sneeze so all of us can hear you. Exactly. <laughs> Let us bless you, Bill. Goddamn heathen. cycling through all the anime pilots I can think of and I'm like yeah they're all awful at everything except for piloting <laughs> alright uh, you two will have a head start you can add uh, Desdemona and CJ respectively to your uh, your connections there uh, but Val or Ben who wants to go next I can give Ben more time okay cool Ooh. do it so <laughs> So what's your what's your playbook? Uh, my playbook is Soldier. Sweet. Okay. Uh, so your starting action points in that case will be two in struggle and one in command. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Who were you before the war stole from you? I think that she's always been affected by the war because my idea is that she's the descendant of some human experimentation that so you were talking about well John was talking about like the sort of pair of human sort of thing it made yep. it got me thinking there's definitely people that try to inject like the best qualities of each animal into one person and for the most part that didn't go horribly bad but it gets horribly bad as the generations go on because that blood starts kind of mixing in like you get complete opposites like a herbivore and a carnivore together <laughs> and the resulting child just has just a messed up like digestive system and he wants me to eat Brussels sprouts she wants me <laughs> to eat meat what am I going to do I can't digest this. I need me no sort of deal. And and I just wanted to make a character of contradiction sort of deal. Okay. At least physically and how she acts in a way. So bef before the war, so are you saying that you were, were you did you start off in a, as an experiment or were you like? the like the third generation of of this experimental race i think third generation potentially so what were you doing um doing as part of this were you were you still like involved in the experiments were they were they still still like monitoring you were you still like a test subject or were you doing did you have like a job be interesting if they there was a monitor monitoring sort of thing and that they weren't supposed to know because it's supposed to be kind of hands free after a bit but it isn't entirely so in that case um, let's make a, a judgment call here so if, if, if your character does not know about uh, the, the fact that they're being watch pretty much um what what was their uh what were they doing during this time what was their sort of day-to-day -day job i think she did find out at some point but not early on in her life at all and i think her sort of day-to-day -day job was just doing the best to get money to just manage everything that she has like odd jobs <laughs> Not <laughs> more like she got into mercenary work pretty early on. Oh, okay. Just maybe became a bounty hunter for a bit. You know, just oh, you didn't file your taxes. 
I like that she's a fucking tax dog, collector that's dog coming out hunter with, in real you life. You know what? That'd be kind of nice if she was a tax collector even before all of this. All right, so it's it sounds like um like your history is gonna be that uh you were some kind of some kind of bounty hunter they basically taking whatever whatever odd jobs were thrown at you pretty much all right we point at a target she goes for it all right so let's uh we'll 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 change this the uh descendant part and just put bounty hunter just because that might give me some more to work with i'll I'll remember the descendant yeah. part but hey. uh uh, so let's see. Uh, in that case, um, put one point into your pilot or vehicle action based on uh, your your experiences as a bounty hunter. Consider your taxes filed. <laughs> <laughs> I think hunt would be a good one. Yeah, I mean, obviously. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, how has your pilot experienced the cost of war? This is going to be your tragedy. So what have you lost because of this war? No, I haven't really thought of that. I think maybe it was just discovering that there was this entire group, and that's the reason why she's messed up. Like this. Just uh, that loss of sort of innocence? I don't know. I think that might be a little too vague, though. Uh, does anybody have any ideas on that? How we can sort of quantify that into uh, um, say it again? What was it? Like finding out that there is still this experiment sort of group, and that like people are like her are still being monitored. That there's still interaction, whether she knows it or not. Just kind of like a big man behind the screen. Sort of. Finding out she's been Truman showed her entire life. <laughs> On some level. That is true. Yeah. And they're the reason why she's just kind of like this. It's so how, how can kind of we have any ideas how we can like distill that down into a tragedy? Uh, yeah, like, you know, how, how does that affect her, her, her day to day like, life? It could have been like a hunt going wrong. Potentially, and that's how she found Ooh. out. Maybe something like, uh, like learned the truth. She she learned the truth and ki like, like uh, be, like probably maybe because like I'm trying to think of like some way to word this, but like she killed her handler. Is she? She didn't know she did. <laughs> what? Is she, is she like, wanted? Like, is she, it? Did she? Did she kill? Like, like Bill said, did she find out about this? You know, maybe, maybe kill her handler, and now on some level she's kind of wanted. Like, by maybe like by the NVI, right? Like that big corporation, right? Oh. Like, like they're like the people who are doing this, and she killed like the person who was like monitoring her because she just like maybe she like started seeing this person a little too often. Like, oh, why this person? Why is this person following me? And it's just that paranoia kind of built up. So if if we go that route, one of the things I talked about with uh, the ambitious, which is uh, the the scavenger guys, um, is that it's it's not only people who um, signed up to be on this new planet. It's also like outcasts and people who are like kind of running from the law. So would that potentially be like your your place that you'd been hiding out for a while now? That you're potentially because. I like that. I always imagine yeah. I always imagine this like tidally locked planet is like kind of like spaghetti western wild west kind of a thing. Like yeah. we're yeah. like it's like really desolate and like, you know, like the livable area, but like, like there's was, still people. I was definitely picturing yeah, like like my whole mind's eye was going to uh Fist of the North Star. <laughs> like Someone's people like fight over it's not me. water. Oh, you gotta watch it. It's so good. I haven't watched it either. <laughs> like you know, you know the whole uh, "Ome wa moshin deru." You're already yeah, exactly. You're already dead. Comes from that. It's great. Oh, you're all missing out. You gotta you gotta see some Fist of the North Star. Movie night. Hey man, 1986. 
<laughs> there, no, New Fist of the North Stars is the one I'd recommend to watch. It's, it's like 2000 something. It's less censored. That too. Oh, it's so good. So let's let's say that your tragedy is that you're on the run. Okay. If you're fine with that, I don't want to. I don't want us to like put, I, put words in your mouth. I am loving this idea. Ooh. This. I Hunt, huh? hunted. <sighs> yes. Oh yeah, we're changing that. Okay, hunted. The hunter becomes the hunted. We're so cliche. This is fantastic. So We're gonna make so much money. All right. <laughs> Only Man, if you post it on Twitch. <laughs> in in my in my look, I put anime as fuck. So yeah, you have it to. Is what it is. Exactly. You have to. Uh, so let's see. Based on the fact that you are hunted, uh, put one point into a pilot or vehicle action that expresses that aspect of your your history there. Hmm. I've got ideas. If you're if you're lost, I could give. I was you thinking of maybe like prowl or maneuver potentially. Prowl prowl works pretty pretty cool with something like that. Uh, maneuver definitely does. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, what do you feel is it works best for you? Hmm. Oh, that's hard. I mean, if if you're hunted and you're trying to be be out of sight. I mean, Prowl certainly works. I think so, because I don't think she wants to get caught by that corporation. Well, that corporate at all. Yeah, the NVI are probably bad folks. Spoiler yeah. alert. Yeah. And our other group works for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just for anybody that doesn't know, my I was running like a a practice game with my Thursday D and D group, um, and we'd already done characters and stuff. And then last night after we started, I was like, "All right, uh, I'm randomly going to basically insert you guys into the world that we've created for our Sunday game." So they work for the NVI. Um, so who knows? There may be like crossover opportunities in the future. We'll see what happens. I hope I get to play Gregor at some point. <laughs> I, I trust that you can play two characters at once. <laughs> uh, let's see here. We just did our tragedy. So gazelle, uh, snake, cat, dog thing. <laughs> <laughs> what? This is. Ooh. This be... Yes, hmm? I, I want to hear. I want to hear what that is. Um. So yeah. So let's see. Uh, what were you doing before you joined the squad? So now that you're you're hunted and presumably on. Uh, on ambition, um, what 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 have you been doing uh, in in between your the, the you you becoming a, a hunted individual and joining the squad? I think just keeping a low profile, but at the same time, money is money, and that is her one weakness. So, not to mention just like. Treating the, like the conditions that come up, like the chronic pain, the digestive issues, a lot of different things. So, what would you say is like her her specialty? Hmm. And the only reason I'm saying her is because I can see your sheet, and it already says she, her. So I'm, yeah. I'm not I'm not assuming anybody's gender or pronouns here. Nobody like don't at me, bro. Hmm. I'm trying to think of what else. So, um, no, you're fine. Um, so to give you some ideas, like, um, what, uh, the, the people who sort of run ambition, um, they're all about securing, um, New technology, um, trade routes, things like that. So, would you would you think that your character would be more along the lines of someone who would steal things for them? Would they be someone who would 
be more of a social sort of engineer kind of person that could um, get them new business opportunities. I think she would work more from the shadows. Okay. Because she doesn't want her face out there, really. Uh, so would you be more um, like a cat burglar type, stealing things like that? Or would you be... Um, I don't know. Anybody got any ideas? Working security. Hmm. I mean, you could be a, a, a fucking sheriff on in oh one of these God. remote towns. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would love to be the sheriff. Another person sheriff. to clash with the officer. Yeah, oh, this is great. Yes. Everybody's yes. got their own authority here. All right, so I love it. This <laughs> town ain't big enough for the two of us. At one point, you were a sheriff. Uh, that's that's amazing. Uh, okay, put one point into a pilot or vehicle action uh, that expresses that point of view. Ooh, I kind of want to get finesse, like, but like that sort of like quick draw sort of thing. Yeah, I'm down with it. One, it's two, three, cool. four, five, <laughs> six. Uh, what do you hope to change in the world? This will be your drive. I think. Hmm. Like, one thing would be to get revenge, I think, on, like, the group that started all this, on that whole science experiment. So how would she go about this? Because it sounds like she she took out her handler already, which was already, like, a, a form of, of, of revenge for her. So what what is, like, the overall goal for her at that point? Is it taking down the this entire like scientific organization is it specific people I think specific people that were in charge of this sort of experiment or whoever approved of it in the first place so let's see how would we uh, how would we write, a, write that um... and by the way at some point I'm probably going to be like Hey Val, what was the uh, the secret code name for this experimental program that they were running? And you'll have to come up with that, and I'll go like like that. <laughs> It'll be great. Uh, so we'll just say oh, I'm pretty bad as anybody else. Chimera, but that's the name of my mech. Oh, mech make. Double double dip that shit. Why not? Fuck it. Fuck it. We'll do it live. <laughs> Uh, so we'll, so what your, your, your drive is going to be, um, like take down project, whatever, or chimera, take... chimera is like a, at least a very good place to work. take down project chimera and we'll have a, we're not, obviously we're not playing tonight. So you'll, we, we've got a week to start working on this stuff and, and these things may not come up immediately. So, uh. Yeah, not a not a big deal. Uh, let's see. We got your drive. Okay, assign three points to vehicle actions specifically. Okay. Uh, question, by the way, while she's uh, doing that. Uh, when we start to play, would you guys like me to refer to your character names, your call signs? Uh, which, which one? I'll defer to the group. I'm good either way. I feel like it should be context driven. Mm -hmm. Bitch, why you gotta why you gotta make me change things? You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, apparently the whole face of the North Star thing's on YouTube as a whole, so there you go. New face of the North Star if anyone wants to watch it. <laughs> I'll probably
probably mostly refer to you as your call signs, but in very rare services. I'm just I'll figure it out. I'll have you know that I shall only be referred to as my call sign while I'm in my mech. Otherwise, it is Officer Desde Desdemona Neath to you. All right. Yes. All right, Officer Athena. Get get into character already. <laughs> this is good. Uh. My All character's right. like asleep in in a chair with the the feet kicked up. <laughs> yeah. Like bottle of alcohol in hand. <laughs> <laughs> Where was it? All right. Uh, so you've got your your next three in there. That's good. Uh, now you can put two points between pilot or vehicle actions. Uh, so basically, just put two points anywhere as long as you don't go over three. Okay. This is hilarious because I've I've got my OBS to like. There's no way to to identify your old webcams. So every time somebody uh, signs off and turns and, and switches webcams, everything moves around. So uh, Val is is now where sorry where uh, where John was. Uh, <laughs> oh, here comes Ben. Oh, there we go. Everything's back to normal. Nice. No one will ever know what what happened. Sorry, I don't know what's oh, going good. on. It's okay. We'll take it out of your paycheck. Your your uh, two cents that you get from the streaming rights. Yes, <laughs> I'm still I'm still getting like every third word. This is so frustrating. Ah, uh, that's not good. Like from everybody or just from me? I'll take that as it's from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's uh, he's you freezing up there, Benjamin? Oh, there he goes. Looks like it. Yeah. Damn. I might change my special abilities. What? You don't want to transform? No, it doesn't. The trade-off doesn't seem great. That's fair. It is it is cool and it may come to a point where it makes sense. Uh I just don't think that I want to do that right at this at the jump. You know what I mean? Fair yeah. enough, fair enough. Da, 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 da. I'll assume Ben's coming back at some point, but uh, we'll keep going. We'll we'll fill him in later. Uh, so I can see your character sheet, so I know what's going on. But what is your name, call sign, pronouns, and look? I go by Bellafron. Oh, Bellafron. Sorry, I need to work on my pronunciation. <laughs> and Bellerophon. my call sign is Artemis. Nice. Pronouns are she slash her. And I look like a humanoid mix of a gazelle, snake, cat, and dog. The dog part is not immediately obvious, and the cat part's more obvious. Alright, you gotta you gotta give me a, a visual here. What part is what? Okay. Face. Uh -huh. Eyes. I guess general body. Cat. Okay. You know, with the slit eyes sort of deal. Or maybe yep. that might be snake. That's debatable. I have dark vision like a cat. Out there, maybe. Okay. Got horns like a gazelle. Sweet. Um, got, like, just, like, speckles of sort of, like, black snake scales. The tongue, the fangs. <laughs> and the dog part... Nobody can usually notice it because I imagine she just wears like a big sort of duster because you know, sheriff and all. And she has like a gold retriever tail. Yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. If you call her a good girl or anything like that, you just see that dum dum dum. <laughs> perfect. Um. So my question to you is, um. Since you are currently the only one that has 
chosen to be one of these weird uplifted humans um are there a lot of you are you are you rare um in terms of the experiment it's not really as rare as it used to be like a picture at the beginning it's just like oh there's just a random person that looks like a fox walking around or just like you know cat girl like you know the ones yeah oh yeah yeah, the first generation like tends to look a lot more humanoid, but at the same time there were like different branches, sort of. Thing. And not every sort of parahuman is part of that experiment. Like, there's probably like a race of frog people that aren't, but kind of they're just frog people, <laughs> you know. So. Quick question to everybody involved here. Um, I kind of see the the scope of this game being on like a limited sector of space. Are there mm -hmm. alien races involved in this? Like, obviously, there's there's some kind of alien race they that was involved that. with this <laughs> this big ship. But do you see do you see there being I like the idea that there's not any like alien aliens that we specifically know about. Everything is just like something that was made by the like the humans at some point. Okay. Except like there's the definitely different watching. stuff, but it was all at some point in history made. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I don't. I think the scope is limited enough that we wouldn't have any kind of like outside influence from other races or aliens. And that makes like the the fact that there's like this ancient alien ship more mysterious. Right. There's still yeah. no outside contact, right? Yes, no. As 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 of as of right now, from what you guys have said, no. <laughs> okay, in that case, um, yeah, there there's probably like uh, as Val was saying, like there were probably other experiments with this kind of technology, which is you know making making frog human hybrids or making cat people hybrids but but the experiment of like gene splicing several different animals together is that is that really kind of like the unique aspect of of your race if you want to call it that yeah i think so like specifically like the more hybrid ones are a newer thing and you had talked about your character experiencing like day to day pain. So, is could we basically assume that that's kind of an aspect of these these multi hybrids? Where, whereas, it really you know, like, depends on like the makeup of it. Like, say for example, like the whole like I mentioned before, the digestive sort of like things. Like, you have a herbivore and a carnivore that makes a chat. You know. But, or that you splice them together, they're going to have problems with that. Whether it be physical or even mental. Yeah. But say you make something that's similar enough, like maybe a cat or a snake, then there's not really any big issues. So this is not specifically like something that all multi-hybrids are going to have. This is just going to no, be... No, only the okay. ones that have like something contradictory on some level. Which, as you go through the more generations, okay. is just popping up more. Good to know. Uh, let's see. What was the ability you chose for your playbook? Uh, tough as Nails. Uh, tough as nails is penalties from harm are one level less severe, though level four harm is still fatal. Uh, that's a very awesome uh, skill to have, um, especially again because when we played our Thursday game, uh, you guys really got away with a lot more than you should have. Um, so that'll come into a lot more play. Um, all right, good to know. Uh, so add add the other two to your connections there. Um, everybody else, add your add uh, add Artemis uh, slash Bellerophon to your 
uh, connections and we will now move over to Ben hola uh, Ben what playbook did you choose uh, I'm going to go with Infiltrator sweet all right, we've got your three starting points, which are uh, two in Prowl, one in Finesse. Uh, yeah. Who were you before the war stole from you? I was a, I guess, corporate espionage person for NVI. Nice. So, so I would go in and, I guess, steal assets or destroy assets from other companies to gain an, an edge, that sort of thing. So you were, um, how do we sum this up in a, in a couple words here? Um, like corporate spy sort of a deal? Yeah, corporate spy. All right. Uh, place one point into a pilot or vehicle action that is uh, expressive of the fact that you were once a corporate spot. I'm going to put one in survey. That makes sense. I like that. Your your squad definitely needs that. I don't know if anybody is yeah, uh, very gonna, good at gonna, that at this point. I'm gonna flex so that this <laughs> actually worked out. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, how has your pilot experienced the cost of war? What have you lost due to this war? Um, ownership over my life. I feel like I traded in my freedoms for credits. Um, my apartment is owned by my corporation. My transportation was owned by my corporation. My meal plan was funded by my corporation. Healthcare, same thing. That's great. Uh, I'm gonna write that down as like your day-to-day -day freedoms. Like basically, I mean, are you basically a corporate slave at this point? You kind of yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of what I'm getting at. All right, let's uh, let's change that because that's way more evocative. Uh, okay, uh, what were you doing between uh, the fact that you became this corporate slave and um, the fact that you joined the squad? Um, so I feel like there was kind of like some kind of inc inciting incident where I uncovered some kind of information about, I was going to say like child slavery or, or like child being gr children being grown in labs and then like being like basically monitored and grown and like trained to just become like part of like the corporation mess because as uh i guess john was saying earlier that like they favor like like key performance in indicators and like ai and like making sure that like everything is operating as efficiently as possible so you you basically like discovered um, some sort of like corporate secret I want to say like I don't know if it's necessarily about children because I feel like that kind of ties in with what Val was saying about her character maybe more it's it's more about the I don't know we could we could go with like some kind of dawn star like information like maybe like something about how crystals could be grown or something like that I, I don't know I have a week to think about it but like maybe some sort <laughs> of some some sort of like corporate corporate information that makes NVI look terrible so you you found this out and then because of that um, are you were you on the run um... yes yeah, so I brought this up to my superiors and they like immediately I, I'm thinking like they immediately revoked like all of my access to everything and like I can't even get into my apartment and so like I felt like maybe like talking to uh, the military group might have like at least get me some food <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I traded basically secrets for living I think is kind of what I'm going at all right, so how do we um, let's try to distill that into a couple couple lines. So how would you <coughs> how would we would describe that? Um, um, like a, are you basically a snitch? Or, I'm like ooh, an informant, I guess. That's cool. Informant. I think I spelled that right. After a couple bourbons, you never know. Yeah, yeah, that looks right to me. Uh, so in that case, uh, put one point into either a p pilot or vehicle action uh, that expresses the fact that you were an in informant in some way. 
que maybe sway. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, I like that. All right. Uh, what do you hope to do to change the world? This is going to be your drive. I want... I don't know. I think I want people to play the game fairly. Uh, or I guess or abide by war, war codes more appropriately. Uh, I guess I want to see... Like... You want to establish that... the uh, the Geneva Convention? <laughs> yeah, I want to. I want to establish war crimes. I want to be part of a, a war crime council. No. Um. Let's see. What would be my outcome? Yeah. I. Well. Let's see. I want maybe. Maybe you just want freedoms, right? Like I've been like a corporate slave, and now I'm kind of like being an informant for a military thing. Maybe I just want freedoms, like. For myself instead of like some kind of global or solar scale kind of a thing. So like you want to buy out your contract kind of a deal? Yeah, yeah, I like that. That's cool. That uh that'll definitely give you a lot to work with. Um uh, so now you can add uh, three points to any vehicle actions. Well, if I am a stealth person, I uh, definitely want to maneuver. Definitely want to scan. John, is that a Snuggie or just a random blanket? It's just a very comfortable blanket. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cold. It's very cold in this room. I'm jealous. Are you one of those dads <laughs> that's like, no, don't turn the heat on. It's it's a comfortable no. 64 degrees in here. No, <laughs> no, we don't care about that. Um, uh, we have an extension on our house uh, that was very poorly constructed, and they just tacked on the ductwork, and so this room has always been like too hot in the summer and too cold in the winter uh and so it's just too cold right now <laughs> yeah oh so i'm just uh bundled up like 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 a like little mary. burrito <laughs> yeah like mary <laughs> i mean it's a blue blanket where is where is burrito uh he's sleeping i'll go get him is that the name <laughs> of your dog cat it's my cat. Oh my god, amazing. Yes. Why do people always name their cats after food? I know a bean, a parmesan, and now I guess a burrito. Pancake. Ooh. Pancake? Uh, let's see here. Okay, so hold on. Uh, one more. One. I got one more left. I think I'm going to put it in either maneuver or scan. Hold on. Let me see. Discern truth. Move your vehicle with skill and agility. All right, let's do a discern truth. I feel like that's important for an informant. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, now you can put an additional two points into either a pilot or vehicle action. Wow. Oh, um, it's points. Oh. 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 I need to see. Hold on. This is distracting. <laughs> Hello, kitty. Hello, he's Burrito. a big boy. <laughs> he is big. Wow. He's very chill. Yes, that is your junk. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be a complete role playing session without some cat junk. This is <laughs> true. <laughs> just, just wait um, till we get into Val's character. Yikes. God, you're getting wrapped up under this. I Maybe think I should have named her Pussy you said, Galore. You said it was Pussy. two, two, or three? <laughs> uh, two. And you can split okay. them up or put them wherever you want. I'm going to put one in study. And...
and I'll put another in survey. Nice. Uh, let's see. Uh, choo let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, cool. Um, so now choose an ability for your playbook. Um, I'm kind of waffling between shadow or ghost, which would be either I can bypass security measures or I can spend spark to resist a consequence. Can I ask a question? This is a really stupid question. What is yeah. spark? Um, spark is it, it's God damn you, John, for making me try to remember what it was. <laughs> Control F. Uh, Control F. From what I remember, not only you know, Spark is like your your character's like it's like the fact that you're a hero and you can sort of like draw on your reserves to do something. Ah, plot um, armor. Basically, yeah. Um, basically, so and. I, I think you can fuel um, <coughs> skills with it. Like in this case, uh, your you know this this shadow ability, you can spin spark to do something with it. Um, if you don't have an ability that use uses spark, there may be um, another way to use it. Maybe you can resist rolls with it. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I've, that's one of the aspects I've got to go back over again just to make sure. Um, but I so, I so it's. It sounds like some kind of like very rare currency that you can use to use whatever special ability you have, yeah, and then possibly additional effects. Okay, yeah, it it recharges once every mission. Got it. Yeah, I'll okay. uh, I'll I'll get back into that. I I know it I know it fuels things like uh, specific special abilities, but I don't know if there's a, a specific use for it if you don't have an ability that uses it. I want to say there is, but I'm. I don't want to commit to that right now. Okay. Right, I'm going to pick Shadow for it. now, but I might change it after I think about it. All right. Uh, Shadow, you may spend your spark to resist a consequence from detection or security measures or to push yourself for a feat of athletics or stealth. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. Uh, pushing yourself, by the way, is when you... Um, spend stress to give yourself um, another die on your roll or to increase the effect of your roll um, and we'll we'll get into that later but um, okay spending spending stress is probably going to be a huge deal in this game um, Bill and Val one of the things uh, that um, that we kind of did weird the last time was we were spending stress to give yourself, you know, another dice or another effect. Um, but if you don't have any rating in your skill at all, uh, like for instance, um, Ben's character has nothing in struggle. Uh, last time I was ruling that you get like 1d6 based on that. That's not the case. You actually roll 2d6 and take the, the lesser oh, roll. Uh, okay. So it becomes way more of a a benefit to to start spending your stress in cases like that. But the more stress you use, um, the more likely you're going to have to remove yourself from a scene or end up get, gaining more harm based on uh, certain factors. But again, we'll we'll kind of get into that when we actually get into the the actual play aspect of this. Um, but yeah, uh, so you have chosen your Wait. ability. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, what is uh, your name, pronoun, call sign, and look? Um, I'm gonna call him Sonny, and last name TBD. Cool. Uh, call I'm... sign is gonna be. Uh, it'd be like. What do I do? So S U Ns are like spy unit nodes or whatever. Some kind of like role that they called us in. Uh, the NVI, and when you, I guess, are like kicked out of the NVI, you don't really have a name because you're just a corporate slave. So, I'm going with Sonny, which is kind of like a based off off his acronym of his of his role in his company. I like that. Uh, uh, and if you if you could um, just make sure that some place is written down what the SUN stands for, because uh, that'll probably come up for me at some point. 
Sure. Um, call sign, I'm going to go with Noctua, uh, which is the owl constellation, which makes sense for a spy. I was going to say Thanatos. <laughs> <laughs> oh. See, I was going to go with Hades. Also good. I mean, two of us have uh, Greek. Uh, Wait, don't we all? Like, I think we oh, all does do. Everybody? I think we all <laughs> okay, do, well, actually. I forgot the astrological signs are a part of that. Yep. I should yeah. remember that because of Scorpio. Ooh, or maybe instead of Noctua, you could go with uh, Nox. That's pretty sweet, N-O-X. though, that uh, that Noctua mm-hmm. is, um, you know, because Athena is related to owls and things like that. So. Oh, that's true, too. That's kind of cool. It's, I mean, I just like all these call signs. We we they all, all cool. we all plan this. It, <laughs> it made sense. That's nice. I no, mean, I, I that's pretty that's pretty fucking sweet. I like uh, I like Noxua. That's that's unique. I I don't think I've ever actually heard that. Like yeah, ever. I was like I was looking up owl in different languages because I was like I want to do something about owls because I feel like yeah they're crazy crazy stealth when they kill things um, and. Yeah, I settled on that because I found a constellation named after it. No, that's I was like everybody's doing Greek stuff. Let me look up constellations. That's <laughs> badass. I I like that a lot. Uh, what do you look like? Um, I think he's gonna be like more of a what is it like? I want to say like skinny, tall, um, fit, uh, probably indescript looking. I'll have to find a photo. <laughs> Does his head go like this? All the way around. <laughs> <laughs> like yes. a camera stabilizer, always facing like perfect. And like you they have like chicken sometimes for filmmaking. <laughs> yeah, anime legs, right? We're like yes. <laughs> but like, have you ever seen those things of like owls where you they pull up the like the the plumage or whatever, and you can see they've got these awkwardly long legs and talons. Oh or whatever. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, that's fun. So he's uh, he's, he's just some lanky, lanky looking dude. Uh, what kind of dress is he? Does he dress in? Is it more uh, proper? Is it kind of like typical spy outfits? What do you What do you think? Yeah, I'm thinking like somewhere in between typical spy outfits and what they wear when they're woken up from the Matrix. Um, <laughs> just like some random dark colored cloth. Nice. Maybe it, I would say sometimes it has pockets and sometimes it doesn't. In random places, right? Oh yeah, the uh, the Rob Lee field. Uh... <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I think that does it for everybody. Let's get into the connections real quick uh well tr- does anybody have to go at, like right at 10 30 i don't know how much time we have tonight we can we can definitely go into the next i'm good i'm good ish i'm gonna have to like stop doing character stuff necessarily like kind of soonish i'm not exactly sure sorry <laughs> I can add stuff uh, to your sheet if you like message me. Okay. Yeah, I mean we we may not need it. It kind of depends on uh, on what goes on, but yeah. Um, so let's run back to Bill. Um, we're okay. gonna start off with our connections. So everybody starts off with one tick in their connection clock for everybody. Um, if you haven't yet, go ahead and net, add everybody else's name. Um, Got that. to your connections uh, so Bill what do you think um, your belief about these other three pilots are that, that are in your squad um, and anybody that, that doesn't know what I'm talking about um, a belief about somebody doesn't necessarily need to be true it's kind of like going to be the way that your character sees another pilot um, sort of superficially right off the bat um, and then we we explore that in your in your downtime activities. You may be able to cut loose um, as one of the abilities with someone else, and in doing so, you learn more about this person. Um, and the idea is that you kind of get a a better idea of them. 
um, and when your clock on their um, connection fills up to four, um, then you can ask them a question based on one of your current beliefs, and that player then has to answer that truthfully. You will then build um, a new belief based on what they have told you, and we go from there. Um, and the benefit of doing this is the um, the more connection you have with the pilot when you go to help them out, um, you can give them more benefits. So you'll spend more stress to help them. So if you have a, a connection clock of just one, then you'll only spend one stress, but you'll only be able to give them one benefit. So you may be able to um, give them an extra die on their roll. You may be able to increase the effect of something. Um, mm. But if you have a connection of two, then you'll spend two stress, but you'll be able to give them an extra die roll and also an extra benefit and so on and so forth. Okay. Cool. Um, so yeah, so this is going to be not necessarily, necessarily something that, that is actually true, just something that you think your character will believe about them. And if you have questions and want to involve the, char the, the, the person who's playing this character um, in the conversation to figure out what is what is something interesting you guys might want to role play and talk about um go for it but yeah uh bill what is what is desdemona's uh initial sort of feelings about let's say I always cj see paper. Yeah, yeah. That's the one I, got down. I feel that they're undisciplined they don't know self-control <laughs> that's my initial read nice i like it all right uh yes make sure that that is written down which you have done um do you want to go through your whole list or will we want to do like a round robin thing uh i think it makes sense i guess just for the sake of streamlining like i guess we'll do like my three and then we go through each person because it'll be easier than kind of bouncing i think sounds good uh what do you think uh, of uh bellerophon that they're a wild card. They're too unpredictable. Perfect. And uh, what do you think about uh, Noxua? That I'm still thinking about. I gotta hmm, work with me here a little bit. Yeah. Because yeah, it's like I know that I'm gonna be like butting heads with them, so it's like uh, and in the exact fashions that I sort of have here with my beliefs. So I'm kind of thinking, like, what's my initial sort of read on on Sunny here? Hmm. What kind of an air does does Sunny give off um, to to people that he just meets for the first time? Um, they probably think he's despondent. I would say. Okay. Like he doesn't really seem all too interested. Okay. Okay. Uh, thinking of how of how uh, does the would take that? We can come back to you if you want. Oh no, I have an idea. I'm just trying to like that how I would word it, but like um, uh, like not diligent enough. Needs to pay more attention. You think I'm a slacker? Yeah, <laughs> I was literally about to use those words. All right, uh, let's jump to Gemini. Uh, CJ, what do you feel about uh, Athena there? Uh, she's too uptight, and it'll, it will hold the squad back. Nice. I like that. Huh. I was uh, going to call her a tight ass. <laughs> I mean, everyone can think that. Yes, every everyone can oh, double can... up on the fact that she's a tight ass. Okay. okay, good. Um, let's see. What do what does CJ think about Artemis? Um, I, so I think I missed some of Artemis's background. Um, can I get like the Cliff's Notes version? <laughs> uh, so, human experimentation killed her handler. Uh, was the sheriff very likely going to speak in his sort of sudden drawl? <laughs> oh yes. Um, kind of um, sneaky, kind of violent. Was a bounty hunter. 
Um, Only became she... sneaky after bounty hunting. <laughs> so, sheriff first, then bounty hunter, hunter second. Bounty hunter first, then sheriff. Okay, yeah, I like that order better. So what about she is strong and worth keeping around? I like that. That's it's it's nice to have a uh, like a positive aspect to somebody. God. Look at her. Look, Val's Val's so touched. She's like, oh my god. <laughs> Thank you. You like me. You really like me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, what do you feel about Noxua? Uh, he has secrets that are better left kept to himself. Ooh, that's good. Ooh, that's cool. All right. Um, let's just go in order of what uh Bill has on his sheet. Uh, Bellerophon, what do you think about Athena? <laughs> I think she's a stuck-up bitch that takes herself way too seriously. <laughs> this seems to be a trend that everybody kind of has with Athena here. <laughs> By the way, I'll tell you right now, I have very uh, personal feelings about uh, the the name Athena uh, going back to my original... <laughs> Uh, role playing days. John knows all about this shit. So, oh my god, your character yeah. is gonna get fucked constantly. No, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Dawn, Dawn, yeah. if you're if you're watching, uh, no hard feelings. I love you. You're cool. Um, yes. So, uh, holy shit, where was I at? Artemis. Yes. What do you what do you feel about Athena there? I already said. I oh, yeah, that's right. Him. Stuck up bitch. Uh, Athena, what do, you feel... <laughs> what do you feel about Gemini? I feel like... I feel like he's trying to hide something. Some sort of insecurity. Because he's way too showy. He has too much energy. He has to be hiding something. Just like, I don't think people like me. Or maybe I killed a man. <laughs> And just shot, to watch and die. Shot a man in Reno. Yes, thank you. Okay, somebody had to complete that. Um, so it's it's kind of uh, you you think he's insecure in some way. He's he's over. He's he's project. He's uh, what am I looking for here? He's over. Over overcompensating. Yeah, over yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Love it. Uh, all right, Artemis. What do you think about Noxua? I think. Just judging by the whole sort of slacker vine, that sort of despondent, I think he's a total pushover. Mm. I like it. I'm sorry for beating me. That's you can, good. You can bend him to your will no matter what. Yeah, sounds good. All right, last but not least, Noxua. Uh, what do you feel about Athena? Um, I think she's orderly, but ultimately... What's the word? Subservient to her, her management <laughs> constructs. Kind of like um, a teacher's pet sort of thing. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, teacher's pet. Ooh, compromised. That's a good one. I, that's, that's that's a pretty good summary word. Yeah, that's sick. I like that. That's pretty. That's that's gonna lead to some opportunities. Um, so just just so everybody's on the same page. Um. The idea behind this is that, um, if I remember correctly, if you struggle with uh, your belief about someone else during a mission, um, you gain experience because of that. So think about what you want to bring up in in the role play aspects of this. So if you if if Noxua believes that Athena is compromised, then during a mission you you may out, outright say, you know, um, all right, Matt, the, the reason that I am withholding this particular bit of information is that I don't trust Athena. I think she's going to bring this back to her superiors and it's going to screw us all over. And it might, it, it might 
fuck us over in the long run, but I just can't trust her at this time. So that would be me. That would be me thinking that you are struggling with this belief that you have about somebody, and that may lead to you gaining experience, which gives you as a player a benefit. You know, you're um, you're advancing your character in a way, but it also gives the story um, a really kind of interesting plot twist at that point because you are specifically give hiding information from somebody else for a certain reason or you're doing this it's right. it's kind of a way to to make you act against your own um your own better judgment that would normally help you out as a squad um so it's it's sort of a um it's it's a way to reward you for screwing everybody else over, I like to think it's that's probably not the best way, but that's that's kind of the way I see it. I mean, it it um, it may not be the the best thing um, for the squad at large, but story wise, it's it could provide a a cool turn, um, and because of that, that we the the game rewards you with uh, with experience. Uh, so having said that, uh, <laughs> Noxua, what do you feel about Gemini? Um, I think he's showy, but ultimately a good pilot. So he's a bit of a show off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's wearing corporate sponsors, right? Like, <laughs> or he was, what was at that least. Olive Garden thing again. <laughs> what? what? Was the Olive was the, Garden thing? The Olive Garden. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Val uh, Valvoline. Can you Olive hear Garden. your family? Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, and what does Noxua think about Artemis? Um, I think. Mm, I'm not sure if Noxua can trust Artemis, and that maybe. I think Artemis lacks certain experience. Which was kind of ironic being both a bounty hunter and a sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> uh so what would you what would you say is like your your dominant uh dominant one there? Is it is it more that you, you can't trust her or is that she lacks experience? I think it's the inexperience, yeah. Good deal. All right. Um, does anyone have any other questions or stuff that they want to share about their character before we move on to the squad? Um, just a quick note. I think I'm changing my pronouns to they slash them. Good to know. I will do my best to follow everybody's pronouns. If I screw up, um, please just give me a, a gentle reminder. It's not uh, it's not on purpose, but it may happen. Uh, so we are now going to move on um, to the squad aspect. Um, we'll we'll leave vehicles to just a little bit later. Uh, but um, your squad. The reason I want to kind of do this now is that the the vehicle aspect can be done offline if we need to, um, just to kind of to build up. But the squad is going to be something that you guys have to uh, really decide on together. Um, so there are different kinds of squads uh, that you can have, um, and. They are the consulate, uh, the front line, uh, logistics, mech, cavalry, profiteers, recon, R&D, or the redacted. Um, does anyone, does everybody know what these kind of signify um, all together, or does, do, do people need a quick ex explanation of what each one sort of means? I think I get it. Yeah, I think I get it. Uh, so, what do you guys feel like off the bat? What uh, the the what your squad is doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be what the kind of missions you tackle constantly, 
but it's going to give me an idea of what you're most interested in pursuing. So if you tell me that you guys want to be a frontline squad, I'm going to assume that you guys probably want to be the uh, the fodder that's that's always on the front line of the war. You're always you're always in battle. You're you're dealing with that kind of a thing. Whereas if you um, you tell me that you're going to be more of a recon thing, then uh, you're probably going to be predominantly doing missions that are more of a, a black ops kind of a deal. Um, so it's not it's uh, it's not going to be every mission that involves with that with with what your squad is but it's going to tell me what you're you're most interested with as a group of of pursuing and go the the two that call out to me like immediately just with like seeing like wh who we have picked here and everything like the two that jump out at me immediately would just have been like metcav and uh recon yeah yeah like uh, I thought, those were the two that were like the immediately most obvious. But beyond that, I, I mean, I'm pretty open. Uh, I would like to see most of these. Like, there's a few that I don't think would fit. Like, uh, like the more social ones, I think, are a little <laughs> outside of what it seems like we want to do here. But in general, like, I think any of the more like, uh, like fighting focused ones make a lot of sense. Yeah, I, so I feel like um, my first instinct was mech cavalry, but I feel like with the broad scope of skills, I feel like recon probably fits a little bit more. Yeah. And I feel okay, like recon does fit our group a bit. But what about spec yeah. ops? We're kind of like, our skills are kind of more suited towards that. I mean, you're a former spy, a bounty hunter. So Ben, um, when, you spe when you say spec ops, are you talking about more like the redacted? Yeah. Is that not one that's that we can use? Why is no, it no. redacted? No, that's <laughs> just what they call it. They call it like the redacted. Like you... Yeah, you're like off the books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that one. <sighs> um... I actually like that one a lot. I just, um, to me, that implies we are very heavily in whatever, like, this operation is. We're drinking mm -hmm. the juice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, or we're like, like yeah. corporate juice. Yeah, or we're, like, uh, conscripted into it or forced into it in, in a way that, like, I don't know that our characters are set up. I mean, I think that, like, uh, you know, maybe. Um, Maybe Desdemona is, but um, I, I don't think that like uh, Artemis or or Noxio, you guys are. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I I kind of agree that I sort of like I see where Recon kind of still scratches that too. Yeah, yeah, that's true too. And and again, like like Matt said, like that we don't we're not locked into only mm -hmm. doing Recon. We could very well oh, do a sure. Black Ops uh, mission or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah I feel like I just feel like recon fits more like just our broad swath the of broad skills. stroke yeah yeah um let me just let me take a quick look at mechanized cavalry strikes fast and hard yeah for... which I mean for Metcav, at least the way I see it, um, or, or the way I'm, I'm interpreting it, is kind of like um, you guys would be the squad that would be called in for precision strikes, awesome. or yeah, yeah, you know, there's there's something going wrong. You, we need specialists to come in and handle something. Um, like, like tip of the too. spear. Yeah. 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 I could, yeah. I don't see that. I'm not seeing that from. I mean, I can see that for our group. I just don't feel like that's kind of the the picture the that we painted. The main thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like we could do stuff like that, but that's probably not like our main call. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys, your your backgrounds from what you've told me and 
the the playbooks that you've chosen definitely gel with recon. I mean, I'm not going to push you towards anything in particular, but yeah, my instinct is for recon. Uno recon. Anyone else? I recon. Yeah, I was going to say I think we're all pretty agreed. It feels like works for me. I feel like we Jazz we hands. missed an opportunity to have like a scout though within our group for recon. <laughs> well, when I kill one of you off, uh, your next character, <laughs> I can I can reroll. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I feel like your your infiltrator fits perfectly. I feel like. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and say that you guys are doing recon. I'm going to get rid of the mm -hmm. rest of these here just to clean up a bit. Do we pick a special ability from that? You that will. Um, you'll actually pick a couple different things. So uh, I'm going to do the, the squad creation um, the way they sort of Lie, uh, lay it out. Um, I kind of know some of these things you guys are picking, but just in case, um, what do you guys see as your as your patron faction? I think like uh, it's like the, the patron factions technically with this one, like the autocracy. Yeah, I think so too. All right, so I'll just put in the uh, the autocracy. Um, we kind of talked about that already. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll we'll figure out a name for what that is um, and since this is what you guys have chosen um, I'll definitely be way more um, open about like uh, what we call it you know I kind of let you guys sort of crowdsource that a little bit yeah uh, so let's see yeah so uh, note that while the pa squad's patron faction does not necessarily own the squad it does expect them to follow its orders and work towards its interests additionally the independent faction is purposely more challenging blah 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 you guys aren't independent that was an option if you guys wanted to be you could be an independent faction and sort of work for yourselves it's sort of like hard mode for the game um, if you want to talk about that but you guys seem like you're going to join up with these guys so that works um, so set your relationship with each faction to zero. I'm going to do that in our off hours. Okay. Uh, create a NPC who is the direct superior of the squad. Uh, it's my CO. <laughs> does anybody have any uh, any any objections to that? Um. No. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me a name. Who's your direct superior here? Uh, I'm trying to think of Iago. <laughs> Iago, he would. Well, you went with testimony. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you know what? His first name definitely has to be Iago. Fuck it. <laughs> Iago is a great name and a great character. Um, yeah. Iago. You guys know I'm going to do a Gilbert Godfrey voice for him the entire time. Now. Oh, yeah, of course. You have to. Oh. Can we hear it now? Oh, my God. No, I can't do it. I can't do it without <laughs> screaming. <laughs> have you seen him recite that Cardi B song? It's hilarious. <laughs> oh. oh, God. That's but, yeah. Uh, like, I'm picturing it's like Flight Commander Iago... Like Do you want him to have like an anime Iago. name or like a normal name? Oh, anime the shit out of that thing. Flame, Flame Strike. What'd you say? Yeah, go Flame Strike. <laughs> Flame Strike? No, that's... that's a warrior cat name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So that is a warrior cat name. No, I feel like Day or something like that is like a super anime, but spelled oh, like D E I. You know what I mean? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Iago Day. Iago like Day. Day. Yeah. Opus Day. Yeah. Day. day. Yeah, so Flight Commander go. Day. I actually really like that. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. That's good. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is who I, as the GM, can potentially use to assign you guys missions. Uh, you guys will have a lot of uh, interactions with him. 
That's whose uh, ass I kissed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so eventually, I'll. This is going to be something I kind of do in the off hours too. Um, one squad uh, that is that exists in this world is going to be friendly with your superior, um, and one squad is going to dislike them. Um, so I'll. I'll, kind of, I'll clue you guys into that um, as we go. Uh, choose a goal for your patron faction. So this is kind of one thing that um, that I I want you guys to have input on. Uh, all the other factions, um, if you if for some reason you had picked another one of the factions, I would let you guys change it. Um, but since you guys chose this one, uh, what do you guys see as the the goal of your faction? Um, so some of your, your your options are assault the foe. Um, divided they fall, golden streets, hearts and minds, hostile takeover, intelligence coup, manufacture heroes, or secure the borders. Um, so if anybody didn't go over that section of the uh, the, the rules, I can try to give you a, a general idea of, of what those things mean. But the idea is that... Um, your your patron faction has a goal, um, which is represented by a four tick clock. Um, anytime you or another squad does something that furthers that goal, um, you're going to get another tick on that clock. When you fill that clock up, you will get a um, a, a specific boon that your patron faction gets based on uh, what what this goal is. Uh, so you get some some additional benefits based on that, but it's uh, so like in in this case, um, uh, one of the the potential potential goals is hearts and minds. So the idea is that you're you're trying to further the ideals of your patron faction and kind of make people believe in them. More. Win the hearts and minds. Ex exactly. Basically, yeah. So you're it, every time you do. Um, something during gameplay that that furthers that goal, um, then after that mission, I can give you a tick in that clock, and we'll progress that. So is that like is that like quote unquote hope from Star Wars? Oh Jesus! <laughs> you 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 mentioned uh, John's uh, safe words there, so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna let him bust out on that one. Can I ask a question about Golden Streets? Yes. I haven't read this section of the book. Is that like we just want to like make things great for everybody like within our faction? Like is that or am I understanding that right? If I remember, um Golden Streets has to deal with you are trying to better the financial standing of your faction, whether that's um, securing uh -huh. additional supply lines, or you, you know, you basically want to make your faction more, you know, more more prosperous, more rich. The one I was sort of feeling was like secure the borders, like taking that to be like in the sense of taking back these installations, taking back the things that were taken from them. Mm -hmm. Like just moving the lines on those maps. Yeah, I think that's like their main goal. At least that's what I was reading sort of into it. Hmm. I, I like that a lot, I, especially because like, technically this is a Cold War right now that we're seeing um, and the the borders are probably nebulous. Like, we don't have clearly defined like, we might have demilitarized zones, but we don't have like, a clear demarcation line or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Mm hmm And also the other thing that makes me kind of think that is I was looking through the other people's faction goals and it'd be a different one from everyone else. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, yeah. I'd be like, wait, no, uh, intelligence coup? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can have the same ones because, I mean, at, at some point, hopefully you guys will fill up this clock and then at that point they have to change their goal. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not a big deal. But, uh, yeah, I, I like the idea of secure the borders. Um so I will do Works my damnedest to remember that when I write this up on the faction page. 
Uh, choose a squad playbook, which you guys already have. Uh, choose an initial reputation and a forward operating base. Uh, so your initial reputation is the way that other squads see you. So they may see you as honorable, they may see you as slackers, they may see you as a liability in some aspects. Um, and the idea is that um, this this is sort of how I can not only role play how other squads react to you guys being um, being present on a mission, um, but the the more often that you sort of represent um, the way other people see your squad, your squad gains experience based on that. So the more you you kind of uh, uphold this this uh, your uphold your reputation, uh, the the more likely it is that that uh, that you'll gain experience and and further the the abilities of your squad. So kind of think of it as a way, you know, how well how this kind of leads into like how how well Bill is treated in his command, right? Like I feel like I feel like Bill's character is like given like the ops, right? And mm -hmm. I feel like his standing with his commander is reflective of our standing as a squad. In one sense, but I'm also just like taking over essentially. Like your little group was like already somewhat existent and then I was just placed in command of it. Okay. We so could have already had some reputation. Yeah. I, we also don't know like we, I don't think I like I feel like there's we're skirting around it, but I don't think we've formally uh defined <laughs> how our group kind of came to be either right. you know like it very well could be like a so like one of the the um one of the like actual plays was like they basically were like a suicide squad type of thing where they were like all misfits that were like collectively approached by a character that was like then okay now you're a squad um we don't it sounds like you know bill I, i'm on board with you i think like uh we may already have had some interactions um, like i picture like everyone sure. but my character has had his interactions i've just been kind of slotted into it yeah and i like that idea a lot um that we all kind of like came together and that they were like mm, let's put let's make this formal maybe we did something right uh and um they you know, like you said, like they wanted to form, they wanted to formalize it. Say so they slotted you in with your commanding officer, who we don't know what that. So, do we need to harden is. our personal relationships? It's that kind of what it sounds like. Like a little bit, maybe. Like you guys don't have to be like long standing together, but I think that that's like maybe I mean, like there's like yeah. a previous mission of some sort. You know what I mean? I feel yeah. like. I feel like the connection between CJ and uh, Sonny could be could be easy. Um, yeah, and I feel like the the connection between CJ and um, and Artemis uh, could be good to like easy to slot it to, slot together too. It could just be very it could very well be a situation where it's like I know a guy, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I do like the idea that like we maybe we've worked together in the past, um, with the exception of Desdemona. I like that too. Um, and, and maybe not all together. Maybe it could have been on various things, and we you know, we just happened to do something together that was successful. And they're like, "Ooh, maybe we should legitimize this and like basically deputize them or something." Deputize. Um, <laughs> oh my God! Yes. You're okay. my favorite deputy. <laughs> we de do we become deputies? Are we <laughs> Someone poisoned the water hole. <laughs> oh my god. So then, is your reputation that you are promising? Yeah, Ooh, I like that. Word. I like that. Yeah, yeah, promising. Yeah, promising is good. Yeah. All right. That gives us that gives us room to earn it too. Yeah, it's also kind of similar path to how we were set up in um, New uh, New Vista. Yeah. yeah, yeah, in a fun way. Yeah. Um. All right. So in that case, uh, now you guys get to choose a forward operating base. So this is basically where you guys hang out um, when you're not on missions. Action Park again. <laughs> Uh, no, you can't both it, have Action Park. No, I'm voting for <laughs> Artemis's like town saloon. 
That's what I'm voting for. <laughs> I mean, it's a small town. Discreet. So Discreet. I'll 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 ask ask this just to kind of lead you guys. Um, so depending on where you set this base up, it's going to be like uh, potentially where a lot of your conflicts. Exactly. So I mean, if you're okay. if you're based off ambition, it's going to be you know a lot of that kind of stuff. You're probably going to start off with a lot of very um, singular mission types. Whereas if you're based off whatever the the hub planet is, um, you're going to be you're going to have a lot more um, expansive opportunities there based on on what we do. Um, so just yeah. kind of think about that. So do we have to select from the options that are here? Or no, are you can options? you can. Those are just kind of examples. You can kind of come up with whatever you whatever you guys feel like. Does it's anybody need to go? Be. By the way. No, I'm good. good. I moved no. to my garage. I relocated. I had to kill a couple of bugs. It was exciting. I'm glad you guys weren't watching. <laughs> <laughs> this is being recorded, so... Yeah, yeah I know. That's, fine. that's why I had the camera off. <laughs> watch it in post. <laughs> I'm just gone for two minutes. Uh, I'm kind of thinking, like, maybe, like, this, like, little recon base is, like... Like, it's just, like, a little, like... Um, like radio sort of outpost just then like like maybe like nestled into like a mountainside or some other remote location like i, like the I almost picture days. like like there's just like you have like a little like flight strip there's like a cabin there's a radio mast like blink and you miss it if you're flying over yeah, absolutely which is good like for recon yeah that's mm -hmm. cool yeah um does anybody have any any strong feelings against that no, I, I like it. Uh, okay. I like it. Uh, is this going to be like a desert mountain thing? Is this going to be like a forest mountain thing? A snowy mountain kind of a deal? It's going to look like the thing in that show, Masks. Oh my god, I had that, uh, I had that toy what? and it was amazing. What? What? You got to show me. I'm, oh, I'm looking for shit. it. Oh, yes. Matt, maybe you can link it first. Hold on, let's see. Mass I'm just like base. base. I was just thinking like. Uh... No, COVID's ruined all my all my Google searches. No, no, no. Man, I remember yeah. for a while I couldn't even get the correct one. Yeah, uh, it's like got a gas station. Yes, those were those toys were freaking amazing. I was thinking like. Uh... Oh, here it is. Hold on. Oh, I found the oh. toy, but I there it, like the show. Had uh, let's see, mask cartoon base. Let's see if I can find that. <laughs> yeah, that was the toy. It was basically a gas station. <laughs> but it fo oh, yeah, it folded the T out. from Teen Titans. <laughs> I do. I just like the it's idea like of an it arc. transforming, <laughs> or like opening up. Oh yeah. Ooh, did you ever? Have you ever? Mm. Oh, no, that's not what I want. I mean, I see a bunch of the, the toy. I don't see any of the actual cartoon. I almost picture like a, as an easy tie-in to uh, what we were doing with Thursday. It could be like an alpine sort of situation. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Uh, if we went, if we to go that direction. Yeah, like snowy, snowy like like alpine, like high mountain. It, have take. you ever seen like the um, the BPRD uh, base in this in like the snow? BPRD. I'm not sure. There's like one image. Oh, yeah, from, from Hellboy. Things. Yeah, from Hellboy. There's like no a top fortress. Oh, that thing looks pretty sweet. Post right? a picture. Yeah, that's that's pretty hot. John, did you post, post a picture? It. No, let me see. If I can... You you can go ahead and post a picture. Uh, I'm still see. doing this on my phone. Copy image. Cash. James Bond fortress. Ooh. 
That's cool. Yeah, that's like perfect. Yeah, I dig mm -hmm. that. All right, let's let's go with that. We've got a, a snowy, uh, we've got a snowy Ford operating base for you guys. Uh, Ooh, can we name it after a winter constellation? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Orion. That is a winter constellation. Ooh, or instead of like constellation, maybe like uh, Demeter. Mm. Demeter. Mm. Demeter base. Orion's also really good though, so I'm pretty easy to convince towards that too. Because oh, Orion's yeah. a really cool name. Like I'll, installation I'll Orion. Snowy mountain base in there for right now. Uh, you guys can can come back and anybody is is free to edit that when you guys figure out what you want. Whoever says it first in character gets to name it. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it so weird that we're at Jotunheim Bay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Create your immediate region or choose one from the regions listed in the blah, blah, blah. We're not using the things. Uh, this is the area surrounding your forward operating base. All it needs is a rating of 0 to 4 for wealth, might, technology, and crime. Uh, four. Write the ratings on the squad. <laughs> everything for everything. <laughs> On the squad. <laughs> is there a crime in a desert uh, snowtop <laughs> fortress? Oh. Zero crime. Crazy. Real quick. Zero, zero crime. I would say zero Sketchy crime. penguins. We had a four crime. Penguins. It's just like the Antarctic We're... base, but with crime instead of sex. I gotta sex. find the directions. I don't yeah, even I know see where to put that on there, so that'll be, that'll be something else. Is it in the spreadsheet? Uh, it's in. It's going to be under the recon squad. Yeah. Recon, got it. Recon, got it. Recon. recon. Oh, that's Ricola. Sorry. Th then, like air horns start playing. <laughs> um. <laughs> so let's see your your immediate region. Uh, what do you see as your wealth rating from zero to four? I don't know how much th we can change this later on, but we can just spitball this super quick. I mean, your immediate region. Give it like, a yeah, give it a three. I guess. Mm. I I would think? almost say like uh, there's. There's not much wealth, but maybe there's other like military installations nearby. Yeah. Would you say our military installation mm -hmm. is higher tech than others, though? Uh, no. You are uh, just based on the confines of what the book says. Is like your your base right now is like small and unimpressive. Okay. Yeah. When the women see it, they go, "Oh, that's uh, nice. you've got one of these." I thought you said you had a fortress. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I'd say like the surrounding area, maybe just through the other military installations and stuff that is relatively nearby. Maybe it's like a two wealth. All right. Uh, or three, three somewhere three in three. there, like you guys were saying. Yeah, two. Two is fine. Is this in the uh, recon playbook? Yeah, no, uh, they don't have like a specific section for it. I'm just sort of writing it after your uh, forward operating base. I'm just gonna like put put numbers. Oh. Okay. Um, uh. What do you what do you see as your your might in this area? Is it uh, is it well fortified or is it sort of uh, off the beaten path? I feel like for a recon group, we're probably off the beaten path. Yeah, I'd, mm -hmm. I'd say it's definitely more about its stealth location than being well fortified. Mm -hmm. It's like a zero or a one. I'd say like zero yeah. would be the point. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Yeah, that's its almost defining feature. Uh, technology in this uh, this snowy landscape up here. Now, this isn't just your base. This is going to be also the surrounding area. I feel like the surrounding area, like because we're recon, it's probably fairly low. Um, but I feel like the base probably has access to some resources, so I don't know. Like whatever else is in the area as well. Like anything that's out here has to be some level of tech to just yeah. exist. It, like properly be usable in this sort of area. Like nothing's yeah. low, low tax. Every like I'd say like one or at most two. Yeah. Works for me. Let's say one for now. We can always come back to these. 
I don't know how often uh, this will come up, but we'll find out. Uh, the final one is... Not seeing these anywhere. Crime. Uh, how do you see your crime in this area? Zero? <laughs> yeah, that, that seems like it fits. Four. Yeah. <laughs> you, I do like the idea the that like, maybe, maybe some of the scavengers are, Ooh, are in the true. area. True. Yeah, Ooh. like maybe there is like a uh, scaver bases and stuff, right? Yeah, like like there's it, there's like it, there's, a, there's, like there's a, a, always a ri always a risk of being discovered. Risk of being like a risk of being discovered. Like smugglers like use this area as well. Like it's like yeah. it's bound to be a good place yeah. to lie low. Maybe like the train like the train routes and like the uh, the flight paths Ooh. in this area get sacked. Maybe the the base itself was an old like smuggler oh. base or something like that. Oh, yeah. that's oh cool. I like that. Ooh, yes. Oh. Cool. Especially because it means that uh, potentially there's still people out there that have some idea of where this base is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Not that that'll ever come up in any of the uh, stuff that you guys do. No. With. Not once. All Never. right. Uh, let's see. Choose a squad ability. Air echoes. <laughs> that one's cool. Wait, where like where is that? that? It's in the spreadsheet. Yes, uh, that'll be in the recon, uh, the recon section. Right after Val's soldier playbook. I'll quickly send it to you, Val, so you can look at that. I found it. Um... There you go, I sent you a picture of it, Val. Synchronized is really cool. Yeah. Synchronized is really cool. Yeah, it's but we are really snippy. Um, just, just so you yeah. guys know, um, a group action means that um, rather than somebody like outright helping you out by spending stress to help a single person, you can say, I... We're all trying to work towards a common goal here. I'm going to be the leader on a group action. Um, and then everybody can um, roll their specific um, action points for this particular role. And uh, you, you kind of go, go based on that. So synchronize would give you, um, I, I, it sounds like if, if multiple people hit, hit, a, uh, hit a six on there, it counts as a crit for the entire group rather than Mm -hmm. One person having to hit the the double sixes for that. Te on a technical side, I think it's really cool. Flavorfully, I don't think it fits for us. I, f I feel like uh, everyone steals is a good option. Mm -hmm. um, I also kind of feel like pack rats is kind of amusing. I like pack rats. like the the idea of the base here almost like between the fact that like you two come from like the uh, the corporate thing and probably took stuff with you, especially from your like. Uh, uh, like uh, the company that uh, CJ's from, uh, yeah. and then also on top of the fact that this is like a smuggler base and all of these things, like it kind of feels like maybe we just have like quite a lot of supplies. <laughs> yeah, I could see that one as well. Everyone steals kind of fits in the same way. I just feel uh, like every, everyone the... steals fits for like a recon group. Um, oh, I yeah, agree. Sure. Like pack rats mm -hmm. also fit. Because, uh, you like we had talked about it before, like this the um, like the seedy nature of like where this we we started with it being like a a smuggler a a, a former smuggler base. Maybe there's like old equipment or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll just tell you right now that um, everyone steals will be nice just because it's going to give you an immediate game benefit like constantly where mm -hmm. uh, synchronize might not yeah synchronize yeah. might not pack rats definitely might not I don't know how often you guys will get into that I mean if that's the kind of okay. game you guys end up wanting to play where you're 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 trying to acquire those assets and doing things like that that's definitely going to be 
that'll be more up to you. So you kind of got to got to have an idea of what you want to do going forward. Um, so everyone steals is going to be like always good. Mm-hmm. super generic, but always you'll probably somebody's going to find some use for that in in more circumstances. I vote for that. Yeah, I, I think it's probably good call, yeah. Cool. Vote is for everyone Hit steals. It. Hit it. Nice, nice, nice. Punch it. And we all do that right now. Uh, Let's see. Doesn't happen. Choose two upgrades. These are going to be tools, personnel, and facilities the squad can use. Each squad playbook has two pre-selected upgrades. um, And the squad also gets to choose two more from the squad playbook for the general squad upgrades. A squad helps you get the... Uh, yeah, we'll talk about it in a second. So uh, the idea is that like when I start building um, the other squads that exist in this world, um, one of these squads helped you get one of these upgrades, um, and then another squad suffered because you got this upgrade instead of them. Uh, but yeah, so it looks like you guys have a hidden uh, forward operation base, which makes sense. Um, you guys also have prowess already taken, which means uh, when you take the train downtime activity, uh, you take two experience instead of one, which is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, oh, when you take the train experience downtime for prowess, you take two experience rather than one. Uh, so yeah, so in addition to that, you guys will get to choose um, two other squad upgrades. From this whole down, down left section. Wow. Yeah. So the uh, the one that says recon upgrades, those are going to be ones that are specific to your your squad playbook. No other playbook is going to have access to those. Um, and if you hover over the different options, it'll tell you like a quick description of them. Um, anything else are going to be more generic that all all squad playbooks are going to get. So. Um, you just kind of think about that. If you want to really lean heavily into the recon stuff, you might pick more of the recon upgrades. Otherwise, you can just go with anything here. I mean, recon rigging is really good. <laughs> yeah. What, what, like, it's hard to not take that. That is hard not to take. take. Yeah, remember that will be pilot only. That will not be your, your mix. <laughs> For sure, but oh. it's still good. Oh, yeah, okay. That's at least my one vote. I think we can all agree on that. Yes? No? Yeah. I'm just yeah. looking over... So we get how many of these two? Uh, yeah, you get two more in addition to what you've got already. Um... Sorry, I'm just reading through these. The other one I almost feel like maybe like a workshop foragers Ooh, foragers maybe Where did you see that? Uh, uh, the workshop is like at the very bottom of general. Oh. That's what I was looking at. Like from like the role play side, I like a picture like they have like the in house stuff, so we could work on our mechs there as opposed to having to take them out, right? Yeah. So that will be. Um... That's super useful. Yeah. So they're, uh, in essence, you know, if if you guys had some sort of long term project um, that involved outside resources and you didn't have that, then I might call on you guys to to do a mission that requires you to go out and secure that kind of a thing, or you may have to have an ally that is. Um, involved in that in order to make that even possible in the first place whereas if you had this you're just kind of like grandfathered in you can you can do just about anything within your within your base 
until I blow it up. They did it. They blew it up. Damn it. Uh, waste two time. <laughs> uh, the other ones that I can kind of see for like... Um, it's a called uh, role play perspective, like workshop, but also like secret routes or tunnels. Like just kind of knowing like the ins and outs of stuff. It could be like kind of like. I don't know, there's some more like there's a some... smuggler sort of tunnel situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean like what kind of experiences did you guys have with your one shot that would maybe We didn't get anywhere near any of this wow. kind of stuff with that. It was no. like let's figure out how to roll things. Oops, we still did that wrong yep. the entire time. But got it. Yeah. Um I mean, I think workshop makes sense. I think any of the engagements, like depending on how we play, I feel like that's it's immediate benefit. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the on-site ones apply. Maybe not all of them. Yeah, and if if anybody doesn't know what what that means by the engagement stuff is, um, when you first start off on every mission, you will always have some sort of engagement role, um, and Based on that role, it will decide um, whether you start off on like a really good position, kind of an okay position, or you start off like really fucked. Um, so taking those different things will, will potentially give you boosts on missions that have to have to deal with that. So you may start off in like a, a much better, much better footing. I kind of like the idea of like uh, secret routes in that sort of manner that. Like it kind of fits with what we have, and I think like uh, it makes like it, like it makes sense from like the the lore perspective, and it also makes sense for like being a recon team, because like transport plans, like like transport stuff, I'm I'm assuming will probably kind of come up a lot with recon. I I would think, you know, having to secretly move around, but I'm not really sure exactly. Hmm. Like I'm not sure which one would come up the most for uh, for recon. Like regional records, like stealth plans, maybe. Mm. Like re recon is kind of like offense and sort of like uh, stealth. Yeah, I mean, I could see regional or, or secret coming into play. Um, mm -hmm. Do we have options? I mean, how do when do we get to upgrade squads again? I guess. Uh, so the idea is that as a squad, um, anytime you, uh, so like, right, one of the things is like you face off against a challenge that's above your pay grade, um, that gives you squad experience. So, okay, got it. And um, I see there's a tracker here, so there's yes. eight, eight ticks. Okay. So I think the I I think that uh, as a squad you start off as a tier zero strong. Um, and I think every other squad in the game starts off at least as a tier one. So anytime you face off against another squad, at least on your first mission, you're going to gain experience because you're going to be punching above your pay grade in some aspect. Got it. Got it. Um, but you also get ex experience for doing um, clandestine or co covert sales or sc securing new clientele or cli acquiring a product supply. Um or you bolster your squad's reputation or develop a new one. So if you say that you're promising, um, maybe your your squad does something that that other people may say, wow, I, I can't believe they were actually able to pull that off kind of a deal. You probably get ex experience for that. Um, or cool. the one that says express the goals, inner conflict, or essential nature of the squad, um, that's kind of nebulous to me. That'll be kind of something where, like, probably at the end of the session, I ask you guys, does anybody feel like you guys achieved this? Um, and that'll, yeah. that'll, that'll be something like, I'm, I'm going to do a lot. I'm going to have to rely on you guys a lot for this. Like, to 
if if your care if you know some of the things are like if your character does something that um like Val's character uh in order to increase your experience uh you have to oh uh, what does it say uh, you addressed a challenge with violence or coercion. Um, I'm probably not going to be looking out for those things constantly. So, if you if you think that you overcome a challenge with violence or or coercion, um, make a note of that. And then at the end of the session, I'll ask everybody. You know, hey, did you would do something that your your playbook says you get experience for? And you'll say yes. I think this, and we'll talk about it. And blah blah blah. But there, there are so many weird kind of side rules on this thing that I'm, I'm really going to rely on you guys. So, all I ask is please know at least your, at least your playbook. I'll try to help you out on your squad. Um, but if you know your, your playbook, um, like the back of your hand, that would be fantastic. But, uh, yes. So, squad upgrades still need two, and then I go to sleep. Okay, definitely recon rigging. I think yeah, I, we agreed on that one. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fine. Bop. One, one more down. and you're free. <laughs> okay. I mean, I like secret routes or warehouse or workshop. Sorry. Um, yeah, those are the two that I was like the the highest mm -hmm. on as well. Flip a coin. John, input. Um, I I like workshop more than okay. secret routes. Val? I'm to bite. Okay, well that means it still tips over to workshop then. Yep. Ta-da. Cool. Uh, do you guys have a name for your squad, or do you want to work this out during play, or work it out uh, over the next week or so? Let's come back to it at some point. Yeah, yeah I don't, I don't like, think we need it. We can make it another Greek thing. Yeah, true. Um, Ooh, oh. The Parthenon. <laughs> I don't know. Ooh, <laughs> that's a little too big now. The Pantheon, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I meant. That's why. Like, uh, I don't know. I guess big, those, two, th those are some big boots. Those are two different else. things, right? What was yeah. the name? Yeah, they were two different things. What was the name of the... Uh... The, the the place where the power changers were from again. Oh, the forge. The, the, the forge. forge. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. That's the name of the the fob. That's the that's the name of the base. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's gotta be the name of the it base. Is a workshop. Especially with the workshop. Yes. Oh, it's the oh forge. Oh my now. god. It's the forge now. Yeah. But um, I don't know what the name of the. Works. I don't know what the name of this plate like like the team is called like a, um it wouldn't be something that my character would have came up with so nothing argonauts. Like related. Not the really. argonauts <laughs> i'm just gonna um, do greek no. stuff i am like a hive uh, not a hive mind what's the word <laughs> I, I feel like Focus. we could do something with with stars or constellations um zodiac the zodiac Okay, you guys. The Zodiac both. Killers. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, the Ted Cruz. We're all That's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> Ted Cruz. Put that out in post. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's definitely the Cruz. post. <laughs> um, no, but like. Yeah, I almost want to say like the constellations, but that's not right. Um, the heavenly body. Oh. <laughs> Star command. Star command. No. No. Uh, That's copyrighted, probably. Jardians of the galaxy. <laughs> Jardians of the galaxy. Are they made um, out of jeans? <laughs> uh. Nemesis. No. Uh, Ooh. That's a god. Yeah, wasn't it like uh, a hunter god though? No, she's the goddess of revenge and bad luck. Love that. I am a library of this fountain <laughs> of this knowledge. Just a font. 
Pretty much. You mentioned something, and I like ninety percent know it. Ooh, retribution. Mm-hmm. Mm. Interestingly enough, her uh, Roman name's the same as her Greek name. <laughs> That's odd for. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a good like name for the group. And, like, you, and you don't have to come up with it right now. I mean, it's yeah. it's also something like, you know, mm-hmm. you guys may come up with it with your uh, your first mission or something like that. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine with coming back to it. Yeah, if someone thinks of something good, oh, yeah. up, like over the week, just post it. Oh yeah, pretty much. Um, I th- I think that does it for for this session. Um, you know, the only the only big thing that we did not come up with were, um the vehicle looks and things like that. I do want to get into that. Um, that may be something that kind of makes sense to just do in chat um, because it's it's not very involved. Um, really, the only things that we have to worry about are like the name, the model, and manufacturer, um, what your load is going to be, but you can kind of tell me that when, when we first launch our vehicles to begin with. Um, and then there's the the four different quirks that your vehicle will start off with. Um, but if I, I think if we have that ready to go by next next session, I should be ready to run. Um, Sweet. If that changes, it may be like a case of we just take off a week while I do a lot of behind the scenes stuff, um, and everybody just kind of chills out, and we'll. We'll come back after that. Um, okay. But I, I think we're in a good spot. Does anybody have any questions or concerns or anything they want to bring up before we adjourn for this evening? Uh, um, well, I guess, like, um, quick question, like, just about the quirks, just so I can, like, have a good idea of how to do them. Like, uh, just just very quickly go through them so I can just get that done on the off time. Yeah, so the the idea behind the quirks is that these are, um, the way I I kind of explain them in my head is uh, they are specific to the model of mech that you have. Um, They are like, uh, I I know that my mech has, um, uh, you know, weird... um, Front heavy claws or something like that. So your your quirk may be um, top heavy. Yeah, like top heavy or you know top heavy claws or something like that. And the idea is that these this this quirk is something that your pilot knows the ins and outs on your mech. So they say, I know my mech has you know these top heavy claws, and I can use them in such a way that it it gives me an advantage in battle Um, but it's also potentially a way that I can use them against you so the fact that you say that you know they're top heavy claws you know you're you may you may use them uh, to to push your mech um, to get extra dice or an extra effect in some way by saying you know oh I'm I'm swiping down with these claws and I think because because they're top heavy it's going to you know, provide much more damage, so I'm going to give it more of an effect on this. Whereas I may come back at some point and say, you know, you've you've got these top heavy claws. Um, you swiped at this guy, you missed, and it caused you to topple over because you didn't have your your weight balanced right. Um, so it's it's things like that. It's going to be um, something that is generally a uh, a benefit for your mech but it's also potentially a negative um you know i, I kind of think of it as like uh, uh a nascar driver knowing how how his car handles around the curves um you know he knows when to punch it when not to the the kind of uh, ins and outs of his vehicle um to really get it to, to hit those maximums whereas if somebody else popped into the pilot seat uh, they'd say, you know, I can run this thing, but I, I can't, I, I can't get the uh, the maximum out of it. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think uh, if there are, what are some of the examples they gave? They had some good ones. 
Uh, example quirks, ominous appearance, flexible structure, slow and heavy, military workhorse, fixed hard points, blinding boosters, splintering carapace, mighty clumsy, light-footed, common parts, redundant systems, aggressive targeters. So, like, light-footed, you know, that, that sounds um, very beneficial. You know, you can move very quickly and, and do all those kinds of things. But, you know, if somebody who is much heavier than you comes and attacks you, if you're light-footed, uh, they're probably going to have the the upper hand on you in that case, and that may uh, decrease um, your effect in a situation on your rolls. Example quirk. So the idea is to, is to try to try to come up with two descriptive terms um, that can be both positive and, in a sense, negative. And every mech needs to have four of those. And if you guys want to have another sort of planning session um, where we do discuss our mechs and kind of talk about uh, what that is and, and what what the different models are and, and what everybody wants to to go with I'm totally fine with that I am I really don't want to rush this if we don't have to maybe like devoting like the start of the first session to that a little bit like like maybe you know because I'm, I'm gonna be working on my, like I'm already starting to work on my mech a little bit right now yeah <laughs> Like like having like maybe uh, some time devoted to people just talking about their mechs so, so we can get an idea of what everyone's mech is, but right. not necessarily like uh, doing all of the work that day. Yeah, I think if everybody has kind of an idea of, of when they when they come in, um, we should be pretty good, and we can just kind of do a, a quick run run over of it. I don't want to spend too much time on it because I would like to at least get like one mission under our belts um, just so we have. Um, an idea of how the system works and um, where we kind of need to shore ourselves up on the rules and things like that because I've I've read this book twice I'm still confused in way too many areas than I than I really want to be um, so the the more often we can kind of play and get into this the, the better off we'll be in the long run so I'm I'm kind of thinking that the the first section is going to be a bit of a throwaway not entirely devoted to whatever the the main story turns out to be. I have no idea what that's going to be, um, but just to kind of get our feet wet and get and get into it, um, kind of like our our first session with masks where we had the uh, the the whole thing with the, the Christmas plot that, that really never played into anything else other than helping us establish our characters and kind of get a feel for how everything worked. He still gave the gift. That's true. It all worked out <laughs> in the end. Exactly. <laughs> Wasn't it on his like? Oh, he did give that gift. Yeah, yeah. he had like a zillion of them or whatever. He was like, "Oh, gee, thanks." <laughs> well, well, like there were moments where like he had it on like a shelf or something like that in like the secondary base or whatever. Yeah. Uh, all, all right. right. Anything else? I'm. I you may good. need to talk about. Offline, we may need to talk about uh, like picking all of the gear and stuff like that. Because um, if I yeah. am going to go with more than meets the eye, um, there's a lot of weird stuff with picking the gear <laughs> and selecting what is yeah. available. Um, there is the nice thing, at least about the gear, is that. Um you do choose everything during play as you go along. Um, yeah. So I'll probably the easiest way for you to do it is going to be um, just to kind of say, I'm whatever is in gear slot, this and this uh, is going to be for one thing and whatever's in this gear slot and this gear slot will eventually be in the other one. Um, but yeah, it's, that's, that's going to be uh that's going to be up to you to figure out how to how to keep track of all that stuff. That's going to be tough. Yeah, I mean, I've got ideas. I mean, obviously, I want it to go between mech and jet or something like that. So, like, 
that might mean like be, having a very clearly defined like weapon slash there's a fine mobility suite option in here yeah. you know something like that would be really cool um you know something like that where it's like okay now i have like access to a lot of missiles but i have it like is at the expense of x y and z skills um which it's in, this is interesting anyway i gotta spend some time with it yeah yeah we'll uh we'll we'll kind of come back over the the rest of this week and I, it sounds like we've got a a very cool handle on everything that we're going for so far um so i, I think the mechs will we can hammer out those pretty quick um, there may be some questions I have, like with regards to um, it, it. It may be that we do want at least one more session to kind of come back because there's the question of you know some of you may want to start with a rival, um, some of you may want to procure your rival during play. Um, so those are all different different things that we will we'll have to discuss and we we can we can figure out if that's something we want to address during like an actual session or just do it offline and then come back and and be ready to play next time but uh i'm I'm up for anything as long as as long as you guys are so uh but yeah we'll we'll talk about that over the coming days and and get a get a better sense for it sounds good and now I'm going to slink off to bed because uh, my husband's probably been waiting for me for the past 45 minutes wondering what's going on. Uh-oh. <laughs> mine, crawled in, mine crawled into bed about 30 minutes ago, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll move. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, talk to you later, guys. That was fun. Yeah, Have a good yeah, one. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, that was really fun. Thanks I'm for uh, definitely looking forward to this. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ta-ta. Bye. Goodbye.